Not to worry, you won't be far behind. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hampton Municipal Buddy Budget Committee. Buddy, uh, buddy is, Committee. It is the Buddy Committee. Yeah. Uh, tonight yeah. is Tuesday, January 5th, 2016. Happy New Year to everyone. And if everyone would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm going to just go over a couple of things before we start. Again, reminding everyone that our meetings are recorded from outside of this room. And for that reason and for the sake that tonight we will be voting, uh, everyone's vote needs to be audible. And we may have to slow things down at some points just to get a roll call on the vote. Very important this evening. Also, you have before you um, an agenda. There are some things that have moved around, unfortunately, tonight. Um, and I'll give you reasons as we go along. But before we get into business, I'm going to start with Nick. And Nick, if you would identify, oh, I'm sorry. Bill, you're all the way at the end. No, I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Sunday Kravitz. Jim O'Loughlin. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Stephen LeBranch. Jones. Mike Plough. Sandra Nickerson. Bob Ladd. Uh, Jerry's and I here. Okay. Thank you. These are the committee members present. Um, we are going to be going into the SAU um, budget as the final recommendation as well as their money warrant articles, but we're going to take things a little bit out of um, order tonight because we have some people that need to leave us. And for that reason, I'm going to ask you to move to the warrant articles and this one for Sacred Heart School and ask um, uh, Principal of Sacred Heart, uh, Teresa uh, Warren Bailey, to come and join us, if you would, Teresa. I know you're a little under the weather tonight, and we appreciate you. you joining us. I appreciate you taking me first. Thank you. I am Teresa Morn Bailey, the principal of Sacred Heart School in Hampton, and I'd like to introduce Cheryl Zella. She's a parent that came with me tonight, and she also is the administrative uh, assistant that works with me. She has two children at our school that uh, are Hampton students that attend Sacred Heart. I would like to thank all Hampton residents for their support of the Child Benefit Service Funds to Hampton students who attend Sacred Heart. Presently, we have 48 Hampton students at our school, 31 are in the elementary school, and 17 are middle school students. <clears throat> the average cost per pupil in the Hampton School District is $15,212, approximately, and we are asking for a total of $950 per student. Um, I will break down how we would like to use the, the funds. Um, it's very similar to what we've used in the past. We, we uh, have our nurse um, that we asked $14,000 for, our educational technology, um, $20,100, our supplies, $4,500, and instructional materials and textbooks at $7,000. So we are asking for $45,600, and that's $950 per student. Last year, we had 49 Hampton students for a total of $46,750. This year, our total shows a 0.43 decrease, percent decrease per student, and an overall decrease of 2.46%, or $1,150. The CBS funds will not be used for any religious purposes. <coughs> So, um, I, again, I thank you for considering this warrant article. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> go around the table, starting over here with Jerry. If you have any questions, Jerry, on the Sounds table. like a good deal to me. <coughs> for it. I vote yes. I agree with Jerry. Yeah, I am. I agree. Jim? 
Yes. Yes. Do you have any questions? No. I have just one. Sure. Um, every year I ask this question, and I know there's been some success in recent years. Are other towns being asked as well as Hampton? Yes, Seabrook has the been Seabrook. asked. Yes, I attended the Seabrook um, Budcom meeting prior to our Christmas break. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, they, the school board approved it, and the Budcom committee approved it um, for our warrant article. Thank you. Is there going to be an attempt in the next year to broaden that a little bit based um, on enrollment? Yes, we're working with Brentwood right now, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there could be a possibility for funds from Brentwood next year. Thank you. Any questions on this side? I'm all set. Thank all you. right. Any questions? Okay. All right. So this is Warren Article 6. <coughs> all those in favor of recommending. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, I have one abstention from Sonny Kravitz. Everyone else has voted to the positive. So the total? So how many have to? It's 14 present. Mm -hmm. Can't be. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. We have 14 are present because we have one open seat. 13, 14 present. We have one open seat now. So it's 13 in favor. Yeah. And one. I forgot, Sandy. You did take a seat. I took a seat. That's, you too. That's right. Did we have yeah, a mic sitting in it right now? <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chairman, did we have a mention that we're opening at a public? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's been in the paper. So 13 yes, one abstention. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice night. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to bear with us because we want to finish up items that were in the budget, and we had one more that's been dragging, and that's MIS. And then um, Superintendent Murphy and Mr. Lunny, we will be more than happy to turn it over to you um, for final review. So this point... Um, Subcommittee Chair Nick yes, Idle, would you like to give us a report on MIS? Um, well, I mean, if it pleases the board, I'd like to have the department head come up and explain our budget a little bit. Before we you do have a couple of questions to ask her in regards to okay, fine. her budget, but it should be relatively brief. Give us the page that you're on, because as soon as I find it, okay. yeah. We just, <laughs> do you want? Seven, I think. Is it seven? No, it's, it's F -O -S -S -O -S. Um, well, I think we're looking at. It's under financial. Well, we've got a bunch of different things. It is. Yep. Okay, so yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's page seven of the actual budget. Okay. Of the actual budget, but right. The, but for the OBS, it is number four. Okay. Oh, so it's OBS four, and then the detail is on uh, page seven. Has anything changed in this? Um, there's only the big change here is the twenty four thousand for the three sixty five live. Um, other than that, the majority of the changes were more the same thing we've been trying to do for the past couple of years is just line the accounts up more appropriately to where things are being spent. So if you add up um, supplies and expenses, repairs and maintenance, new equipment and replacement equipment, mm -hmm. the 2015 budget is like 81,800. Um, those are where the increases are, but like I said, the major portion of that is the 24,000. I think there's a total increase, let's see on page. Oh, I know I didn't get to page seven yet, hold on. Um, 
Mm-hmm. The total increase in there 36, is 36000 with 24000 of it being related to the 365 Live. having some feedback back and forth with your department, which has been uh, productive, I think. Um, one of the things that we had discussed was uh, the bid for the um, Microsoft Office 365. Um, I think you had mentioned at some point in time that the quote was for 150 user seat, user access points. Yeah. Um, and in some supplemental material that you provided us, um, it's stated that I believe we in our physical inventory of PCs we have 98 um, so one of the questions that the IT subcommittee came up with was how come if we only have 98 computers how come we're asking for 150 user access points um, it, the numbers just it don't seem to add up for us there if you could just uh, shed some light on that for us and I believe that that was related to the fact that there are only the 98 PCs. However, we have additional users. We have part-time employees who share um, workstations, but with the 365 Live, I am under the impression that everyone has to have their own login, each individual user as opposed to each workstation. So that took um, part of it, and then all of the different email accounts that we do have that aren't necessarily for um, direct employees or everyday users, but for like the Board of Selectmen and stuff. So that was, I think when Paul went back and looked at it, there was about 125 or 130 total users that he needed to have licenses for. And then there was a few extra because I am also under the impression that once it is assigned to a user, it has to be with that user for a year before it can be reassigned to a different user. So if there's <laughs> turnover during the year, he can't give someone no. necessarily my um, login, so he would have to give it to somebody else. And then mine, once the year is up, would become open again. But in the interim, we can't not have the license for the user. OK. And um, about where did we get the, the dollar amount figure of 24000 um, specifically? Um, does the, and does that cover all the implementation costs to update all the computers that we have and get everything off and running? I have that here. Paul had received a quote. I'm trying to see if I can find a vendor here for you from all the backups that we have. Um, but I do believe that the 24000 was expected to encompass all of the costs related to getting it up and running. I don't think that there was any additional cost for that. I think where we're going with that question is, is the 24000 would be a... Um, it's an annual. Ups, it's an annual? Licensing, yes. I do okay. know that. Sorry. Yep. Um, but that would cover all the... There would be no additional implementation charges to put all the software on the computer. Correct. Um, 24K a year. What's that? 24K a year. A year. Was, that was one of the questions that we had. Just to, yeah. um, then. Um, we asked for just so the chair is aware. We asked for um, inventory sheets, which were provided um, to see what. You know what computers were running what software. Um, one of the questions we asked um, the finance department was, "What was the standard package um, for uh, when the town purchases a computer? What comes on it, um, and what do we have to purchase additionally?" And um, the answer that we received, which everybody received in the email, is based on the department needs. They get their software that they need, and where we were going with that question was. Um, from what we've read about Office 365 is that if, if each town computer is uh, now currently buying Microsoft Office to use their word processing or Excel spreadsheets or PowerPoint, um, 
we were under the assumption that the that software would be then included in the twenty four thousand. So therefore, that cost would essentially disappear on a new computer purchase because we would have the ability to download that software from the cloud. Um, that was more for information. We'll keep everybody up on stage, um, up to date with that information. Um, I think the last thing we had was was the the priority of we've been asking all the department heads to kind of triage their needs and stuff like that, needs versus wants, and uh, how, in a general sense, if you could, three sixty five for the town of Hampton. How I mean. Kind of, kind of sell it to us. How important is that? Is it for the town to get this, to implement it? What, what are the benefits to the town, government function, um, to have 365 in place? Just so people are aware, because not a lot of people know about, you know, the the, the perhaps, software. Perhaps just explain what 365. Yeah, is that's so that's that probably a better way to put it. Don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I think the best way is more. It's the cloud. It's a cloud-based um, system. And I do want to correct myself. I found my notes from my discussions with Paul, and it's actually the quote is for 125 seats, and right now we have approximately 115 users, so that would need those 125. So there's only 10 extra seats that can be used for what I had. I did explain correctly that you know the user can only is for the whole year and stuff. Chrissy, so, that $24,000 licensing level is that the level at 125, and then it goes to another tier? Yeah, that is for 125, yes. And then I would assume that it would go to a different tier depending on, you know, if you add, I don't think we would ever add one user, so I'm assuming that they give you cost breaks going um, to like 150 or 130 or whatever you would go to. But it is, a, it's 24,000 for the 125 users is the quote that we received. So it's a cloud base. It will bring down. Um, but you don't know if you maxed out then. I mean, did you say you need 125 and that's what they gave you for a quote? No, no, Rather I said that this, the quote was for 125 seats, and right now we have approximately 115 users because Nick had pointed out we only had 98 PCs or 96 PCs. So they were wondering uh, the question of the IT subcommittee was why are you uh, requesting the 125 seats? And the reason for the 125 seats, I was just explaining this because we have approximately 115 users part time some shared positions, even though they use the same PC, everyone has to have their own login, mm -hmm. is what I am being, um, how it's being explained to me. It's cloud-based, to go back to uh, Steve's question, and um, we won't have to have a mail server anymore, so there is a cost savings to us for that. We won't have to maintain the mail server because all of them, uh, it will be maintained in the cloud. So there's equipment-related uh, costs that will be reduced, and uh, time, storage, those types of things for not having to uh, have the storage available here. And also, another thing is when our, if our system ever goes down, people will still be able to have access to their email as long as the internet doesn't blow up and crash on us. But now, right now, if we lose a server or if we lose our mail server, then it, employees don't have access to their mail emails. And uh, we do. everyone does a lot by email now days as you would expect. Also, uh, Paul was telling me that Microsoft is, and I think this is a few years out still, but in fairness, Microsoft is coming up with a new uh, pricing fee and they will be charging $300 per year for Office Pro, which is what we have, uh, what we use now. So eventually, the, and like I said, I don't believe that that's supposed to be next year. I think he said it was a year or two out before they're going to be doing that, but Microsoft is in the process of charging, of setting up a fee schedule to charge the three hundred dollars per uh, for Office Pro. So there eventually will be a cost related to that. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just going to read from my notes here because it's been a long time since I read them. It says cost savings will come in the future when we do not have to replace servers, update software, time to reconfigure software, and once the front end work is done, not much involved to maintain it. So that was kind of where Paul was going with that. And I know that IT, um, in regards to priority, Nick had was asking about priorities. And although I'm their department head, I kind of turned to them because I don't pretend like I know a lot about computers. But I turned to them, and this is definitely 
on the top of uh, Paul's list of something that he would like to see um, implemented here and brought to the town. Like there's a lot of uh, streamlining, streamlining and efficiency benefits out of it yeah. once it gets all implemented. Uh, the last question I had was, um, you have a plan to um, that right now that you're working to, to uh, change computers or update computers. Um, replace or replace? Okay. That's yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, in the budget, it, it, it's, the plan is to purchase. I'm reading from the the part three of the questions that uh, you returned to us on the third of December. Uh, the question was number and type of computers planned to purchase in the proposed 2016 budget. You said the plan is to purchase 20, um, depending on butter, budgetary restraints. Um, how many were you able to purchase last year with uh, the default budget? Uh, we purchased 10, and then we did put in a purchase order at the end of the year for the additional 10. So once we finalize all of our end of year numbers, hopefully. We will not have to delete that that encumbrance, and we will have that, uh, all 20 of them. But we, 10 of them have already been purchased in stock and probably all been distributed. Okay. Um, that's all that I had from the department. Any other second. questions? Um, no, I have something Mike, else I wanted to ask. I'll do a couple of them. Thank you, Jim and Chairman. Um, just a couple of things. You say the Office Pro will go to three hundred dollars. Is that part of the Office three sixty five? No, no, that would be um, Office Pro is what we use right now. Right. So I was just pointing that out. It's not has nothing to do with the three sixty five. It's just that Microsoft, and this is just what we're hearing okay. in the next year or two is going. I don't know if it's for individuals or only for businesses. I don't, I'm not sure on that. Oh, but thought. they are um, going to be supposed to be charging a fee of three hundred dollars. For all um, Office pros, pro, pro this on non, a yearly this basis. This non-cloud. Um, yes, absolutely. I got you. I, so I, I was just using that as a comparison when he was asking for pros right. of why we would want 365 Live. Right. Okay. Another another question, from what I understand about, and I'm not as knowledgeable about this as some on this committee are, but I was under the impression there were different levels of seats you could buy or user seats. What do you want to call those terms? I used to call it seats. Like, I think they're still called seats. That's what Paul referred to them as. Back when you bought lumps of seats for servers and stuff like that, they called it seats. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming it's the same label. They have different, do they, don't they have different levels of Office 365 you can get for each user? And if if so, my question is, are you, it all has to do with how you implement it, which is really not budget committee's prerogative, but I'm just curious how you're going to you have a plan to migrate this across the whole town all at once? Or are you going to let some people start off on a lighter version and work up to wherever they might need later on? This is, that's the question I really need to know because they have different seat costs depending on how much you want to buy. You want a Chevy or a Cadillac, okay? Make it simple for everybody sitting here. And are you gonna try to get the deluxe model all the way across, or you're going to start off some people on so they can get used to it before we go to the more expensive version? I'm under the impression that the different levels are for if you're buying it on an individual basis. So like if Mike Pierce goes to Best Buy or wherever you go to buy 365 Live. Mm -hmm. But for a business, the business version, I'm under the impression that there is just the one version of it and i believe one of the questions that may have come to me from the subcommittee was in line to that and i have to look up the an exact answer but I don't remember i'm that. under the impression that the that is true for an individual that you can choose the chevy or the cadillac yeah, so but like for that. the uh business version which is the kind of the version that we would have to buy as a town it was only one in that um so there isn't different levels i okay, guess is the so best it's, way it's to all yeah. And whether the they would implement it all the way across the town at once, I don't know. My guess would be that they would do it by departments mm -hmm. and probably start at the town hall first mm -hmm. to see how it went because that's a smaller group of users and then move out from there. Okay. Um, I know right now they're going through the process of updating the everyone to Windows 10, and I know they're basically just kind of, they have a goal that has to be done, I think, by July for whatever reason. Um, maybe the other one isn't going to be serviced anymore, but they're going through and, you know, when someone's gone, they're updating individual computers and stuff to Windows 10, so. And I have one more question that's unrelated to your budget. It has to do with um, the 24000 
why would we take that out of the MIS fund, which has $29,000 sitting there for 100 years? I don't have an answer for that. I suggest that we take it out of that fund, because the fund was started in, what, 1997 or something of that order. I believe so. And it's been sitting here all this time. It's taxpayers' money just sitting there mildewing. Mildewing? Did I say mildew? Mildew. So I suggest we take it out of there and not reduce your budget by $24,000. I have time to put that in. You might need a warrant article. I think that would have to be a warrant article, correct, sir? Yes. Yes, it would have to be a warrant. They have time to manufacture one of those real quick. That's in the trust, Mike? Trust fund? Yes. Yeah, yeah trust fund. Yeah, it says it's it called the MIS fund. It was written in 97 or something like that. So to this would be this particular expense. It was 1997, I believe. I think you're right. I think I looked it up. It's $29,840. Yep. And they used about half of it in 98 or something like that, and they haven't touched it since. I didn't even know it existed until. Somebody pointed it out to me. And I don't miss much. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, Mike? Because I want to get going. Okay. That's it for me. So, I said Stephen and then Tim. Okay. So I just want to summarize that, uh, first of all, there was an IT committee appointed by the selectmen a few years ago. And it, the 365 was discussed at that time. I was on that committee with Tim and a few other people. Um, the savings are not only going to be in actual hardware, in that remote, you know, the, the cave, as we call it, um, but as well, there's going to be some time saved in having to manage Absolutely. email accounts. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be done in the cloud. Yeah. So there'll be there'll be a couple of savings there. Yes. So this is long overdue. Thank you very much. I know it's been a topic of discussion for a while. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tim? Thank you, Stephen. You're most welcome. The, uh, <clears throat> of course, we reviewed the uh, the answers we got from from uh, I guess from the board of selectmen through you uh, from on the IT committee. Uh, it was stated 150, so perhaps that was erroneous. There'd be 150 uh, subscriptions. Yeah, and I think 150 had been uh, said, but that's, I that's fine. So uh, that, that that just changes the calculation. I mean, we were looking at 13 dollars and 33 cents a month. For those seats, and now it's like sixteen dollars a month for those seats, um, with the one hundred twenty-five that you have targeted. But some of the other questions that we asked, I guess I need to get confir confirmation on. Uh, one of the questions we asked was whether or not the uh, your your IT department is covering the entire town government or certain segments of it. And I think the answer was essentially we do some work for fire department. We don't do anything with the police, and we basically cover everybody else. This would be that, covering fire. I can tell you who this would cover. Right. It would cover fire. It would cover public works. Right. Um, everyone at the town office. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is it. And then whatever, like like I said, there's 150, approximately 150 users. So some people who have email. Um, 150 users, you said 115. That again. Okay, okay. Approximately 115 users. Okay. So, but those are the departments. We don't do anything. This would not be covering the police. So not the police is out. Us. Yes. Police and, you know, I seem to remember when I, you know, because we have on the annual reports, we have to, to pay for every employee in town, including the police. Yes. And I think that number is, you know, uh, something around 150. And for I thought that, uh, about a total of 150 employees on average. Oh, employees? Yeah. I think if you are looking at the town report, there's usually between 355 and 400, depending on how many seasonal workers we have. Uh, well, you they're all know, listed in the town report. The seasonal wouldn't be uh, covered under needing uh, office. No, it would right? not. But yeah. I'm just saying, if you're, I thought you were talking about the town report and wages, and there's uh, more than 150 people. Right. That seemed to be the most massive universe to go after, and then chop from there. I chop off the seasonal. Gotcha. And I'm looking at what. So 150 could be fairly accurate. Of a fairly number. reasonable number. That's when you or said. full-time employees. And part-time, right? Mm, possibly. It might be a little higher if you include the permanent part-time employees. Now, it's envisioned from what I heard you say earlier that uh, uh, all, the, all the all personnel, perhaps except, accepting the seasonal, but all personnel would need a subscription uh, to Office 365 where they do not presently have a computer now because they're sharing a computer. I don't know that every single employee at Public Works, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uses a computer or has a login. So I don't know if that is true. Um, everyone in the town hall does. I know, I'm pretty sure that all the firefighters do have logins, so they would be included in that. But I, my best guess is even people at Public Works who are not necessarily seasonal 
I don't think that every single public works employee has a, a login or uses the computer would be my best guess on that. I would have to look into it further, but I wouldn't guess they would. So the active number of 125 is about 10 over the current anticipated Correct. use, right? Yes. And on that 115, which is the intended current yes. uh, use, if we were rolling it out today, right. uh, do you have any sense of how many of those uh, 115 is actually part-time employees, or employees, I should say it differently, are employees who do not presently have a computer? You mean that share, but share a computer? Right. Okay, I can count the town office people for you. I think at fire, everyone... Um, all of the firefighters definitely do not have their own computer. Okay. Um, but they're not part time either. So you were asking about part time. Well, that's why I, I yeah. changed my question around. So uh, part time those who are in the town computers. office, I can let you know. There's one upstairs. Two down I don't need an absolute about six number. Six in a good the town guess office. would be sufficient. In the town office, there's probably at least six people who yeah. share overall, a workstation. Would you, overall, what would be your gut in terms of the number that's sharing? Just of sharing? Yeah. Well, if you include all of the firefighters, I don't know how many uh, computers they have over at fire, but I know that we have about 44 individuals in the fire department, and I'd say that. One, two, three, four. I'd say. Out of that 44, six of them probably have their own workstations that they work at all the time. And then I think the captains would be next in line. There's four captains. Uh -huh. So probably about 10 who basically have their own. And then my best guess is that the firefighters probably have access to, to one the, the ones that the captains so use. So basically three dozen, three dozen <clears throat> employees in the fire department alone are in a shared computer scenario. Yeah, I know that every firefighter does not have their own computer. Right. I, I know that for a fact. But I do know that they have logins and emails from the fire department. I'm very fairly confident in that fact. Because what we're looking at is we have a, a situation where you have quite a large number of people who do not have a computer now that we would be paying for a subscription that probably isn't needed except for the fact that you need them to have email, apparently, and maybe maybe Microsoft Word, and that's about it, kind of thing. I would disagree with that a little because of the fact that these, when I'm talking about the part-time employees who share workstations, um, let's use recreation for an example. They have two different secretaries in there because a full-time position was removed um, and was replaced with two part-times. So, one of the part-timers I think works full days Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and half days on Tuesday and Thursday, and the other one works the other half of Tuesday and Thursday. Also in the town clerk, they have a similar situation where they have two part-time employees. One of them works three days a week, and the other one works two days a week. Right. So the people what about who are the, What about that large group of firefighters that are in the sharing scenario? What kind of, I mean, what, why, would, what, why would they need? I don't know why. Except for email and maybe sure. Word or something like that? EMS, yeah. That, that's where they do all yeah. of their ambulance run reports and a stuff. An internet browser and... Uh, email that's about it right? no i think for ems like fred just piped up i believe when they come back from an ambulance run depending on who was in charge of that call or whatever they enter stuff into a okay. into the system but the application is an ems application right but they would need to be able to log into a computer mm -hmm. they would need right to but not have necessarily log to log into the cloud is the point they they, they have no need to do that if the, if the if the application is not in the cloud it's on the PC. They can continue to share their PC for that application. They don't need a subscription on the cloud to do that. Probably not to use that application, right. but so they have what, email. So. so it would be, as I was saying, it would just be for email access for, for those people, like likely. Well, we don't know because we didn't ask that question, right. I guess. Right? And I don't know how the fire department, I don't know their complete operations, so I don't feel that I should answer in regards I get to exactly saying, what though. they use their computers for. Not necessarily every user you have needs to have access to the cloud. And as we, even with 115 licenses with a threshold of 125, you may want to look at some positions that don't need access to the cloud. They would still have email. I don't. I believe that they have to. Their email oh. would be in the cloud because, therefore, their mail, so email server and stuff is going away. No, they would need access to an email server 
on the cloud, not necessarily right. a subscription right. of the level that we're talking about. Michael's bringing up these seats. Well, they're actually, they're really called subscriptions, and they do come in various flavors, both on individual and corporate level. Uh, and you can buy into more than one plan. Um, and, and so there, there is more granularity uh, available than would be suggested in terms of the plan we have in play right now uh, that perhaps could give a better return on investment for us relative to what I've been hearing so far. Um, and, and I'll just leave that element of it right there for now. Uh, the MIS fund that was referenced was created in 97, as you all know, $29,000 in the next year, 98, 15 and a half thousand were taken out, leaving 14 and a half thousand dollars. And nothing has been taken out since 1998. Uh, the trustees of the trust fund has grown that $14,000 back to 20, almost $30,000. So there's $30,000 sitting, roughly $30,000 sitting there. Uh, interesting enough that Warren Article 97 actually called for the creation of a IT committee to make recommendations for withdrawing from that fund. Uh, but regardless, your, what I understand from your, your earlier answer, there was no consideration in using that fund as a means of financing this or even your equipment level line items, right? I mean, this wasn't even thought about. No. Okay. And um, I think, Madam Chair, I'll leave it at that because this was basically a Q&A workshop. Finally, finishing our budget workshop. Thank you very much, Christy. You're welcome. Um, one thing, <clears throat> in going over this, and we're not making any determinations on this tonight, <coughs> but we are at a late date, and I know that next Tuesday is the deadline for Warren Articles, and for that reason, in fairness to this particular portion of the budget, I would suggest um, that perhaps you prepare a Warren Article to um, utilize the trust funds, since they have been sitting there for quite a long time and can certainly help defray the cost from the budget. Um, I can't tell you what the outcome of the vote will be when we do get to this part of the budget, but I would rather give you a little bit of a heads up, perhaps, to have something prepared so that you are covered. I just, uh, there are different ways to pay for things. You've been very creative this year, and I think we can put that in, and as we're in the 11th hour here, I would strongly recommend that. Thank you, Christy. I, I didn't mean to suggest that recommendation myself, just so I'm clear on that. You didn't mean to? I did not mean to. I just was curious oh. about whether or not it was a consideration. Okay. Because it seems to me that it's just generally good financial management, that when you need to finance something, you look at all the available financing options and choose the best one. And if we're not looking at them all, then we cannot reasonably be choosing the best one. And to be clear, we did not take a vote on that. That's a recommendation of just several members of this committee going forward because our time is short. And um, I just don't know what the outcome will be. We won't vote on this till Friday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All I'm right. Done. I didn't ask oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. You left off Mike Bluff? I didn't see any more hands up. Well, you usually go. All right, Jerry. No, no, we're got doing a question. hands, Jerry. Go, oh, by, you, go, go by hands. hands. Good I good didn't see him. Uh, is there a return on investment? That was calculated with this 360, or it was just a nice thing to do, or what? Uh, we don't have a calculated cost, but their savings is in regards to, like Steve had brought up and I had brought up earlier, in regards to uh, man hours and equipment. We won't have to have a mail server, and no, and they will not have to maintain the mail server. So we'll, we won't have we'll to have storage that on space. A, on a Thirty thousand dollar or twenty? What is it? Thirty. $24,000 a year on an infinitum, there certainly should be a look at the return on investment and try to size that in terms of equipment savings, man hour savings, whatever. Kind of where I'm coming from. What, uh, which is what I would have done if it was me. Now, what are the, uh, the uh, what, what, what's driving this? A cloud storage issue? In other words, we don't have enough storage capability, so we go to the cloud to store on the store our material is that what's driving this i think that would be a portion of what's driving it and then also the additional costs that are in the future for the 360 or for the um office pro of the 300 dollars. and i think mostly the big thing would be the storage and the server not having to have our own mail server and the maintenance that our mail server requires 
Hmm. And it's part of the future. Uh, well, that, the cloud. It's, it's a, I know I hear a lot about it, but. Uh, um, you can look at it another way, Jerry. SAU 90 has been on office for five years now, <coughs> and so they're trying to catch up to SAU 90. <laughs> now, these computers uh, that we're buying, uh, which uh, drives that replacement equipment account, mm -hmm. um, what's wrong with the computer we have? We have a cycle, a five-year cycle for all of our computers, and so... <laughs> Not all of them are always replaced, but we do have its uh, maintenance. It's so that we do not have to end up in a situation where we need to replace all of our computers all at the same time. Well, they, they've had this in place for several years now, I believe. I mean, and most of the folks are using application oriented software within their computers and email. That's about it, I bet. You know, the tax collector, the town clerk. The firemen, the policemen, they're using application-driven software for their particular ap operations. So, I mean, wh why we use a lot of Word in Excel also. Well, I mean, you can use Word as well, but I mean, email, application-driven, <coughs> Word. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. My computer is about seven, eight years old. I don't have any problem with it. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't fail, and uh, it, it fits what I do with it. So I, I, I know there's a policy, if you will. There's probably a policy, but. I wouldn't want to think we're simply swapping out every three or four or five years simply because the policy is driving us to do that. Well, we don't always replace all, we don't always get the 20 that is in the replacement, so that puts you behind right then and there. If you're supposed, to, if your policy has you replacing 20 every year, um, in 15, so far we have 10. We do have the purchase order for 10 more, like I said, but I know uh, in 14 we only purchased the 10, I believe, and not the whole 20. So you got a five year plan to back. replace all PCs. So. You're going to have all PCs replaced in five years, then you're going to start all over again? Nope, because we have more than 20 PCs. All, all right, right gentlemen, 20. I'm going to have to insist, okay. and lady, I'm going to have to insist that we start to wrap this up. Okay, okay dear. Any other? Okay. good? Okay. Thank you. I don't see any more hands. Thank you. I need Thank to see you. Thank you. Specialist Thank you. Where I am. All right. We've kept you waiting long enough. Sorry. Superintendent Murphy, Mr. Lunny, He's joining us tonight also. You have a budget of $20.184 million, Jim? is that right? Excuse me. Joining us tonight also is, is um, school board chairman uh, Virginia Bridal. We're doing the budget first, right? I'm sorry, Jenny. Virginia Bridal Russell. <laughs> You know, too long. I'm sorry. <coughs> Madam Chair, we're doing the budget first, right? We are doing the budget first. And I will move $20,184,320. Wait. 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 We need this slowly because this okay. is being recorded outside of the room. I will say it more slowly. And I'm going to just ask, are there any changes to this budget from last we met from a numerical standpoint? None. Because I think we exhausted the budget and we're not going through Great. review. So if you I'll would give us that, that number again, you want me to Tim, say it more slowly, slowly so that I yes. move twenty million one hundred and eighty four thousand three hundred and twenty dollars and not one penny less <laughs> for SAU ninety twenty sixteen twenty seventeen budget. I will second <coughs> that. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Anyone on discussion? Seeing none. I've got a question. Sunny? You must back your computers up to the cloud, I assume. That's the, we're not talking about that right yeah. now, though, Sunny, okay? <laughs> this is on the budget. This is numbers. All right, thank you. All right, back to $20,184,320. Discussion right. on that number. Yes. Um, and it's not a big question, but when are we going to see a time frame when we can see the books go away That's not under of the tablets? That's not on discussion right now. I want to stick to the numbers in the review. Okay. okay. Any discussion on, on the budget number, not on future courses of events that we have no control over tonight? This budget number, nothing else? Okay. For a vote. 
All those in favor of $20,184,320. Mr. Bean? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Unanimous. You. The budget will be Article 2 this year, just so folks know. Uh, the, the, the project bond has to, by statute, be Article Number 1 on the ballot, so the budget will be Number 2. Okay, that's where I got confused. Thank you. Now I'm going to thank you very much. It took a long time to get to that vote, but thank you for your patience. We did it expeditiously, though. Jeez. So we have <laughs> knocked off number two and number six okay. on the draft warrant articles. And now if we would like to go to number one. You want a motion on that too? <laughs> yeah, would be good. I'll move that uh, we uh, approve Proposed warrant article number one in the total amount of $24,944,000 for reconstruction and equipping the Hampton Academy. I'll second that. Okay. okay. I think I think it would be best to read, if I could get someone to read this. I'm going to read the whole thing? If Please. you would, because shall it the has town, two parts. Excuse me. Shall the Hampton School District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $24,940,000? $5,000 for reconstructing and equipping the Hampton Academy Middle School and authorize the issuance of not more than the same amount of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA Chapter 33, and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Although I should say thereof, I think. Uh, and further to raise and appropriate the additional sum of $460,550 for the payment of the first year's interest on bonds or notes authorized by this article and authorize the school board to apply for, accept, and expend any grants for this purpose and take any other action necessary to carry out this vote. All right. And a second? Second. All right. And what I will do at this point, Nathan, is leave this open for um, you to do a slight presentation for us on this. Very brief, Mark. Yeah, I, I'm going to do the brief presentation on this. Um, I think it's important that we, we had a chance uh, at our last meeting to uh, review the proposal, and I think it's important that you have an understanding about what exactly it is that we're trying to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. Just a just to remind folks, there was a packet that was delivered to you last time, which included uh, information about cost, in impact, tax impact, and also had site site information. So you have that with you. I think I dropped it on anyone who didn't. All of the pertinence we tried to wrap up, so you've got a one page that includes some of that as well. And all of the comments that we made, some were buried in that. So we know that Hampton Academy's first um, building was built in 1939, making it 77 years old. Uh, 1965 was the second section, and then the last section that was built, that sixth grade wing, was built in 1976. So we clearly know, like you as homeowners know, that you know we really need to do something. When you've lived in a house for 77 years, you need to fix it up. And same with a house that's been 50 years old, as well as a home that's 40 years old. Hampton Academy is no different. The, the difference is, is that every day on a daily basis, we have nearly anywhere between 450 and 500 people pass through those halls and into classrooms and into the building every day. So it does take, like everything else, it, it, needs, uh, it needs to be uh, addressed. Um, I think that uh, on the first slide, you know, the whole reason was, why did the board want to move forward? Why did we want to propose this? Um, and, and, and the second part of my, my quick overview will be why now. So the, the reason for the proposal um, really is for multi-purposes. The first being the most important, and that was to uh, replace the, um, the sixth grade wing. That's that single story building that jets out from the original buildings uh, that houses um, sixth grade. There are nine classrooms, bathroom, and a couple of small uh, conference areas where we work with youngsters individually. 
uh, and it is in disrepair. We have issues around ceilings. We have leakage. Uh, we have poor, very poor air quality. Hallways are narrow with, um, with lockers um, don't provide the kind of passages that we need for youngsters and just has not met our needs. There's two science labs in there that are just under 900 square feet, don't meet the state standard for 1,200 square feet for science labs, nor are they equipped for the youngsters to do that kind of work. So all in all, that, that whole wing really needs to be replaced. We, will, we are proposing that we replace it with a full-size gymnasium. Currently, Hampton Academy does not have a full-size gymnasium. We are not able to use it for a number of sports because of low ceilings and because the size of the room is too small. Even our phys ed classes have posed problems with us because they, 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 the walls are right at the edge of the court. So when you get 7th and 8th graders <clears throat> running and moving, um, we've often had issues with them where there's no place to go except the wall. And I won't describe the results of that, but you can imagine it's just small. Upstairs in the, uh, and by the way, there's no seating down there, so we can't really use it for a game. Nor, nor would you be able to. Upstairs in the Eastman gym, uh, same issues. Uh, the size of the gym is too small. Uh, there's very, there is some seating up there. There is some pull-out bleaches, as you know. Um, but again, the size prohibits us from having any games there. Currently, Hampton Academy is renting uh, time down at the uh, one of the local um, gym areas. I believe it's the rim. Uh, we also are. Um, we are proposing in that gymnasium that we would have seating for 500 so that we would be able to use it not only for Hampton Academy, but obviously other activities that happen in the town during the week. Um, probably one of the most important things that we do every day is around our programs. And so what, you know, one asks, well, what are you going to do around programs? And I think our biggest uh, effort is around science science labs. We have two classrooms that meet the square footage for a lab and have a, appropriate equipment and area and water and access. Um, but the other, uh, the remaining uh, four science classrooms as well as our STEM lab, you know we have a new STEM program. It's been very successful at Hampton Academy. Um, is not in an appropriate size room. So we will make those renovations to increase the size so that we can have the appropriate lab tables and the activities that we feel that our students need uh, in, as they prepare to go on to Winnicunning. Um, another area that's really an, an important for us in terms of program is around our unified arts. Right now, our band, our chorus, and our music have no uh, proper facilities. Right now, our band is downstairs in the basement where the old um, uh, uh, workshop used to be. Um, the uh, chorus is off to the side, off the, that little stage downstairs in the cafeteria. Uh, so it's really been problematic. If you look at our art room, it's way undersized, probably around 600 square feet for our art room. And it just isn't enough room for the students with that kind of activity. So we intend to uh, improve the square footage for those programs. Um, as in our old ho home, old homes, we have issues around things like mechanicals, um, HVC. Our, we have basically there is no exchange of air at Hampton Academy. There is no exchange system. There's no ventilation systems. It's it's called open the windows and hope that you get a good breeze. And don't get if me you're wrong. On, if you're on the wrong side, you don't want to open the windows. You don't want to open because it it's too hot. But the other problem is, is that the windows are, are almost impossible to open because of their age and and the way they're. They, the way they've been developed and the, what's happened over the years, right, uh, that um, they have not been teachers. We don't even allow the teachers to open them, quite frankly, because we've had a number of teachers hurt themselves trying to lift. And uh, so we, need, we know that we, we will replace that. But the real culprit is the poor ventilation. And the, and the poor ventilation that occurs throughout the building will address that. Uh, along with electrical, all of our electrical systems have to be upgraded. I know we just talked about technology and the importance of technology. Well, it is critical to our students. Our kids are using computers and activities and applications, and they're on the World Wide Web, and they're researching every single day in our classrooms now. It, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's amazing to watch. Um, and by the way, take a walk down through the first and kindergarten rooms down at Center School, and you'll see the little ones on the computers. They know what to do. They know how to use the apps. 
And uh, so they're, they, you know, they're coming up to the middle school and on to uh, Winnicunnet. We were very pleased that Winnicunnet followed suit and put in um, a Chromebooks to all their ninth graders. And of course, as you know, we've had that initiative at Hampton Academy for the last several years. So electrical um, has to be upgraded in that, in that school. Um, we also have safety issues, and as you know, the last several years, we have undertaken two significant uh, reviews, one by the um, Homeland Security from the state of New Hampshire and the emergency management, along with a, a, a group called Oganis, who worked with our police, our police uh, force, and they have done um, evaluations. They spent uh, three days, each, each group spent three days in our district evaluating our safety at our schools and had made a number of recommendations to us. I don't want to get into all the details about the safety because some of it is directly related to keeping ourselves safe. But in the, in the project, there will be issues that will be addressed around safety. Um, entrance into the building. Right now, kids are coming in at different locations. We want to be able to make sure that all youngsters go to, into the building in one monitored location and, um, and, and not be mixed with adults. Um, so that we can better oversee that. So it's things like that um, and safety, other safety issues for our students uh, throughout and during the school day. Um, uh, let's see, I mentioned that. Uh, the, 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 the one piece that um, we've been asked about a, probably a little bit more, and that's the auditorium. Um, we currently do not have a facility at the middle school that will seat all of our students and our staff and any guests. So when we have these events, which are awesome events, you know, plays and we have Veterans Day, Memorial Day celebrations and all kinds of things that happen. We have guest speakers. We're not always able to um, have all of our students in the building. So the auditorium will allow us. It will, it will um, be uh, wider. We'll, we'll be switching the stage from where it is now to the back side where there'll be some new construction to accommodate that. But that will allow us to have an auditorium in our community. Um, uh, everyone, the facilities committee, highly recommended this uh, because they felt it was not only something that was of value to our students and our school, and uh, quite frankly, um, Center and Marston also can use that facility um, uh, and the community as well. So <coughs> we're looking forward to it. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, a town manager, Welsh, and he, he's, he indicated that they would like to be able to use it. Um, and, and, I, and that's what it should be. I don't think any school should be just a school seven to three. I think a school is part of the community. It's the fabric of your community. And I would, uh, I would hope that people would recognize the value of that, um, that particular um, um, renovation project to change the Eastman gym into the auditorium. Uh, we also have some other things that we need to upgrade, and in, in our, uh, our cafeteria will be upgraded, uh, as well as our kitchen. Right now, we have had uh, reviews by the um, State Food Service Department. They come down and evaluate all the work that we do and how we do things and how we deliver food. And not that we cook at Hampton Academy. We will continue to satellite, because it's an effective, efficient way for us to work, right? Because it helps us with labor costs and all those other things. But, but they still have jobs to do. They still have to cut up things, and they still have to prepare things and put them on trays and present them, and they heat some of the food when it comes over. They, they may reheat, keep the pizza hot, whatever the kids are having. And there's no space to do that. They're doing that kind of preparation next to the dishwasher. Well, we've been dinged a few times <clears throat> that perhaps that isn't the best way to use our space. So um, we are proposing that the, kitchen be, um, that the kitchen be upgraded for us. We also have um, proposed in our in the it, we have proposed um, a community room, a room that we feel that um, groups can use, our school board can use for community events when they have meetings, when they have their budget deliberations. Um, we'll be able to broadcast them in the, in that room. But we also know that our, our 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 most revered group, our senior citizens, have have been limited in space where they they would. Um, they would like to be able to use a space in town. And it's interesting. It came up in the surveys. It wasn't somebody's grandiose idea. It came up in the surveys. Survey after survey after survey indicated a need to at least have a space for seniors. And since we were doing that, it, that, that 
about a, I think it's a 1,400 square foot room. It's a good size room, good size room, so that you can do arts and crafts, so that they can be bingo, and that they're not limited in terms of the activities. Uh, right now, they are limited given the lack of space. Um, and finally, the, the traffic flow. As you know, um, Academy Ave is off limits at 7, <laughs> 7.15 in the morning and probably around 2.30, 2.35 in the afternoon. Cars are parked on the sides of the street. Kids are crossing over back and forth. Uh, we, have, we have three people out there every day, but it's still not a safe situation. We've redesigned uh, the front so that the um, students, uh, the buses and the parents can come in off the street to drop kids off and then um, deliver them uh, each day and to pick them up. So those kinds of things were, were, um, were accommodated in the plan. So everybody says, why now? Why are you doing this now? And I can't tell you what a better time for the community to do this. Uh, just, I, I said to Nathan, I really took a couple days off over vacation, but I probably shouldn't because uh, things that popped out to me. It's a good time. We're coming out of a bad time in terms of the economy. Look at this. Wages in New Hampshire expected to increase in 2016. Year-end business picture looks rosy in New Hampshire. New Hampshire businesses say 2016 has bright promise. The one that's near and dear to my heart, because it is my business, is census um, the state of New Hampshire gained in census. We had more births than we had deaths, which was good news for me, you know, as I age, but also the <laughs> fact that we're filling seats. We have, we have babies coming. And the other I issue that's impacted our community is immigrants. Our English language uh, learner class has doubled. We, we, we actually, the board just last month authorized an increase, uh, one additional teacher of English uh, uh, teacher for English speakers of other languages because our enrollment has just, it's, it's more than doubled, by the way. Um, uh, just recently, we're up to 34. When Nathan and I came here five years ago, we had eight kids. So the population is growing. The economy is better. Um, and and uh, the, the other two areas that, are, that have impacted us is the bond rates. I'm, I, you know, I talk about the mortgage that I had for my host, my first home that my husband and I built in 1976. Our mortgage rate was eight and three quarters. Okay, the mortgage rates right now for the bond bank are 3.15. Now everybody says, well, they're going up. Yes, they will go up. Right now, we think we're pretty good for a July, um, a June bond, right? June a June 16, buy, yeah. June, June buy, June of 16. Um, that will be very close to 3.15. It's ideal time to do this at a rate that I don't think we'll see again. And, and so I think that's an important piece. The other... It's, it's worth saying that the talking to the municipal bond bank that the analysts suggest now that the, uh, the short-term rates may be impacted by what the Fed is doing, but the long-term rates have already baked in that expectation for some time. So the 20-year rates should not hiccup significantly, if at all, from what's happening in the short run. But for what it's worth, we may have talked about this last time, a quarter of a percent increase in those mm -hmm. bond rates against the project we're talking about for 20 years is another $800,000 in interest costs. So as as you anticipate the potential for rising interest rates and, and them having some impact eventually in long-term borrowing, it becomes timely when you contemplate what an $800,000 hit is for the passage of time. So. And lastly, um, Marston, uh, Marston's bond is being paid off in August, uh, this August, August of 16, and then two years later, in August of 18, the center school bond will be paid off. So that will help at least cushion some of the blow uh, relative to people's concerns around the costs related to this project. Um, I guess that's my spiel. Um, and Nathan uh, did a, a pretty nifty little sheet here that shows costs for the project and what that impact relative to taxes. So I'm going to let him jump just, in. We summarized that. Then we summarized that for you last time we were here. We had the information that was new to us from the, the team of uh, owner project manager, uh, the uh, architect and engineering firm, and the construction uh, firm that we were working with. They had put these estimates together, 
And so I offer up to you the three elements that you had already seen. They're on the slides. They're in the, the largely blue document that we sent around. And again, they were in the packet you got last time. The hard cost, the construction cost for the project is anticipated at $21,895,000. That contemplates, a, that's a blending of, of uh, new construction on the, on the elements of new construction in the $225,000, excuse me, $225 a square foot range and renovation rates uh, for, uh, for the renovated spaces in the $145 to $160 a square foot range. That includes all of the site work, et cetera. The soft costs added on to that include our architectural fees, which I can tell you traditionally are in the 7.5 to 8 or 9% of project scope kind of range for pricing. We negotiated with ours at 4.5%, which for us really was a savings in there that was significant. Uh, as opposed to a million and a half to a million six, we're going to be sub one million dollars in terms of what the fees will be for architectural and engineering. Uh, our owners' project management fees will be there. Uh, you folks have seen, I think, in the public uh, presentations that have been done, Gino Baroni uh, and the team that's, that serves him uh, at Trident. Uh, we're working really hard to limit any of our FF&E costs, our furniture fixtures and equipment, sometimes that's a really big element of projects. For us, the superintendent engaged the staff in, a, in an inventory analysis in the building. It's not that we don't want to equip the building with the best that we can. It's that we have decent equipment in many, many cases. The estimate right now is that we'll be able to salvage and continue to use somewhere around 75% of the equipment that's in the building. We'll need to replace about 25%. And then we'll be attentive to inventory turns so that that which for furniture and equipment that was nearing the end of its life or usefulness will see itself addressed over the years that follow. But we don't have to mortgage necessarily as a part of this package, as a part of this project, things like a student desk or student chair necessarily. The other piece of soft cost that's really important is commissioning. And there will be a measured amount of commissioning, which goes back to this is an aftermarket, if you will, or a third party. A, testing and assessment of elements of construction. So we did this when we did the center school project. When you pour concrete, there are concrete samples taken, and those are tested so that you identify how it cured and, and that the strength is there, that it's set appropriately. There are samples taken of steel. You name it, in all of the trades across the board, we'll do commissioning with a third party firm. And that's an important element of protecting the investment of the taxpayer. All of that soft cost wraps into about $1.95 million. And then the team that we've been working with came back and suggested an owner's contingency of 1.1 million against this project. We've worked really hard to identify to the extent possible with forensic analysis in the building everything that we can identify. You can go into the, 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 the dugout, the bomb shelter, whatever it is. You, you guys, a lot of you grew up and went through that school. We, you can go in, for instance, and you can see and you can bore and you, I, you can tell a lot about about the dirt that's underneath the site. And there's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of exposure in this project to dirt we haven't already turned over once before, meaning where the, where the new piece will go, it's already been excavated. And I said, I say new only because it'll replace the sixth grade wing and out back, it'll connect the two wings. So there's not a lot there to, to identify as, as unknown. Mr. Lassard, if he were here, would remind us all that we have abated every, every inch of or every instance of asbestos that we know of. Certainly there will be a pipe chase somewhere that we'll open up and there will be asbestos there to be abated. We haven't found it all and seen it all necessarily, but, but there's nothing lingering from the past that we have to address because anything we know of we've already fixed. So we really feel that that is as tight right now at this stage of the process as we can go with, with that, uh, with that uh, owner's contingency. And all of that adds together to $24,945,000. And, and the team stands behind that. And with an affirmative vote in March, we move forward very quickly with, with full design because they anticipate that they will begin in the summer of 16. And if you want to take just a minute, I would share with you that one of the documents that you've already had is a, is a rough sketch or a rough plan of the phasing of the project, which would include in the first summer, this would be next summer, demolition of the sixth grade wing 
and the lower gymnasium, making room so that over the course of the 16, 17 year, they would construct in its place that which you see here as red. In the, in the summer of 17, they would pay particular attention to renovation of the cafeteria and kitchen area because they have only the couple of months of summer to turn that over and give it back to the school so the students can use it. <coughs> and then in the 17, 18 school year, they would, in pieces, move throughout the existing structure that remains, the old 39 wing and the 65 wing, and they would renovate indoors over the course of that school year so that final punch list items and, and final cleanup would be done in the summer of 17, uh, excuse me, the summer of 18, and we would be we would be in and complete before the school year started for 1819. So that's that phasing to give you a sense of that. Obviously, tax impact is what's most important. And I, I'm trying, and Jerry, as a member of the board and an interested, uh, an interested citizen as well, we've been working hard at, at documents and, and at graphics and illustrations to try to communicate this. But here's what I'll offer again tonight like I did last time. In year number one, which is this, this warrant we're considering, we have to raise $460,000, $460,550 specifically, which is the estimated first year payment, interest payment only, against a bond sale if we went to bond in June of 2016. So we have to make that interest payment. A year later, the total bond payment is more like 1.7 million, just under 1.67 million. We'll need to add to the budget another roughly $875,000. But that will join the 450, the 460 that's already in the budget. It'll join the 400, uh, the $340,000 that is no longer needed to f to pay off the uh, center school project. Excuse me, the Marston nice. school project. So all of those three pieces of money will wrap themselves together. This year, it's about a 17 cent per thousand impact. The subsequent year, it won't be on the ballot, but it'll be part of the budget and it'll be a 32, per, a 32 cent increase. Assuming that the tax base stays at the $2,714,886,200 that we are now, that number, whatever that number, right? Assuming no change in that, which there's a lot going on in town, there's gonna to be a lot of change in that, but based on the number we know right now, uh, you'd be talking about 17 cents this March, or th this coming December in your bill, and 32 cents the subsequent year. That's the tax impact. Questions. Okay, that's, that's that's it. That's that's questions. That's the project. Funny. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It has to be replaced. But my position is the Center Street School is the oldest public school in the state. There's all that recreation land behind it. You could build a brand new academy there with all with every bell and whistle you, that we need. And well, let me explain it this way. Portsmouth Rehab, their middle school, right? They had a budget of $37 million. Right now, they're $4 million over that. <coughs> they're still struggling. You could build, it's, my understanding is it's always cheaper to build new construction than to, to rehab. Well, I totally agree that the academy has to be replaced. The site is not large enough for the playing fields. The recreation area, tuck field behind the Center Street School, is large enough. It's got a baseball diamond. It's got all kinds. Of, uh, uh, what I agree that the academy has to be, be replaced, but I'm going to abstain because I feel, you know, the board voted, the school committee voted to to go with the rehab. You know my position, so we do. We do. I no, so, we so. appreciate that, and, yeah. and uh, uh, we understand the dilemma. <coughs> yeah. I mean, the board had the same dilemma. They had a land over in Toll Farm Road, and they had to make a decision whether to build new. But four years, five years ago, when Nathan and I came, there was a number on the, and we didn't, we didn't push the new school when we first came. It wasn't a good time. The economy wasn't good. People weren't ready for it. Nathan and I needed to do some work. Um, so we've been looking at this, but in 19, uh, what time, when did we come? 19, 2011, <laughs> when we came, it was the, 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 the project was around $29 million for the renovation. So when we got this bid at $24 million, we, we went, yahoo, because it was actually less 
Um, and they predicted that the renovation would have been 26 million back then. So we really feel like we've, we've made some gains. We have a better understanding of what we need um, without really going crazy. We went and visited Portsmouth Middle School. It is, it's 40, 40 plus million dollars. Um, but I think what we have will be comparable to that school when, when all said and done. Um, and they're in the middle of the city. They don't have any fields. They're, they're, they're right. There's nothing there. There's the library, which is a great asset, absolutely. But we have our library down the street. And, um, and, and so I, we hear you, Sonny. We, we no, recognize that. We, we, and but we appreciate that you've spent time thinking about it. We really do. And the board does, too. Okay, Madam Chair, would I like to raise a question, please? I think, in fairness, if any, but this is a big, Mike, before you look to move the question, this is a big investment. If anybody else has any questions, it's only fair we give them an opportunity. Just a quick note that we will uh, next week on um, uh, the Wednesday, 13th. Wednesday, Wednesday the 13th, 13th at 7 o'clock. At yep. 7 o'clock, we have a bond hearing. So that will be give the community an opportunity again to, to, to uh, share and give input to the school board. That is their meeting. They will stage it. And then, of course, your meeting is the following mm -hmm. night on the 14th. So we'll be looking at, again, we'll be looking at uh, any um, money issues. So the community will still have a chance to um, have, in, uh, have an opportunity for input. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to, you have a question? Maybe we should wait to vote on it until after the bond hearing so we can hear fully from the public then. <laughs> I don't know that that will change us one way or the other. Um, I don't either. Before we move it for a vote here, which I'd like to take tonight, I just want to add these few things. Maybe this will give you some thought. Sonny, like you, I would have preferred to have seen a brand new school, but I do know this is not a new discussion. It has been out in the community for years. And this community has a love affair with the academy. And this is where this community wants it to be. So that being said, if it were an option to have it somewhere else, I'd be on that bandwagon, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. So the question that you're now left with, is this the time? And do you have a school that's worthy of the 21st century? My children graduated, and both of them were well out of the school system in 2001. It was an old school then. It was tired. As we sit here and discuss a 1939 wing and a 1965 wing, we're all either in retirement or reaching retirement. We probably weren't even in high school, some of us back then. So you got to take the whole picture and see where you are and what you're capable of doing. More than that, we have a team here that's proven itself. Right now, we have, and I'll start at the top, we have a very responsible school board that has been capable of taking the needs of our children and their education and the cost and finding a balance. That's unique in itself. Boards come and go and change as we know with election to election. We also have a very good and competent team in Superintendent Murphy and Director of Finance, Mr. Lunny, who have proven that they can come in here, ask us for money, and actually come in under budget and give us a return. That's not a gamble. That's a proven winner. And while it sounds like a compliment, it's meant to be because you've come to us before and you've, you've proven yourselves. This is a much bigger project. But I would say everything subject to change, we may not have the benefit of this triumvirate down the road of this board with the schools, the school board with this superintendent and with this financial director who, having worked closely with him in budgets, many people in this room in recent years, all right, you've seen him find ways to pay for things that really scratched it. So I, for one, Sonny, even though my preference, if I had exactly what I wanted, would hands down say, no, I'd rather build new, even if it cost a little more than do this, I'm telling you, my vote is 100% with this team. And I would ask 
this committee to support, but by all means, you will all vote your conscience. Tim, you have one more thing to say? Yes, I have uh, some questions and a comment. Okay. And not a sales pitch. Uh, the cost, uh, I noticed that you you stating it after doing a net from bonds that are going to get paid off in 2017 and 2018. Okay. Those are unrelated bonds that are getting paid off. Correct. So I don't want to relate it. What's the actual cost? Gross. If you if you had to raise if you had to raise the entire amount of a full payment, your annual payment will be right around 1.7, just under 1.7 million. That's about 62 cents per thousand. So it's 62 cents per thousand yep. per year, 20 years. For 20 years. Thank you. We'll stagger into that. The first year will be just the 17 cents. And, and after that, it'll be a full 62 that. cents. Let's not do that net net because those right. are unrelated bonds. They shouldn't be. I understand what you're saying. It does. It's about tax. Does impact. mitigate right. the net effect on the taxpayer. Yep. That's right. But let's not but disguise the actual cost either. No, so no I want to say it's 62 right. cents per thousand yep. for 20 years. Period. Right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm not done yet. <laughs> well, you paused long enough. I thought you were. <laughs> That's because I'm going on to another topic, Madam Chair. I thought you took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> or you could interpret it as a dramatic pause. Right, Mr. Bean? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do appreciate that while I wasn't able to attend your presentation of the Budget Committee uh, when you were here last month, I did receive a call from uh, Kathleen, the superintendent, and invited me to come down uh, to meet with Nathan and, and Kathleen personally and have a discussion in which we enjoyed our little threesome for something like two and a half hours. So uh, we really got into a lot of detail. And uh, one of the things that was uh, topical was related to the IT subcommittee. And uh, because, as you recall, the IT subcommittee had determined that, uh, in fact, we made a motion as a matter of policy statement, that no modern renovation can truly be considered modern unless it incorporated fiber optics. So I would like you to make the statement that you made to me earlier tonight with regard to your promise that this does include plugging in fiber optics into uh, Hampton Academy. As a part of the project, Hampton Academy will be, will be uh up, will be upgraded to a fiber bandwidth, a fiber connection. Excellent, thank you. It'll come in, yeah, it'll come into the building, it'll go to the, to the we call them MDFs and IDFs. Don't need closets. to get into the details. The deal is either. we're going to get fiber optics into that building. We are. Okay, and that is absolutely essential, Madam Chair, because the school system is becoming increasingly dependent on using the internet as part of their curriculum. Mm -hmm. The expectation from that policy is that that will actually increase over time. Yes. Without any any horizon that says it's not going to increase anymore after year X, it's just going to continue to increase. Agreed. As far as we can see. So it's vital that we have uh, optimum bandwidth coming into that building if we're going to, in fact, execute this uh, curriculum policy. And that is a major, major plus to me. I will point out to you that in the two and a half hours, I brought up a number of points. Some things I liked, some things I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go into the details of all those things I like and what I didn't like because both? that's all really a matter of personal taste. We could have done this, this better or that better. It would have been better for the community to do it this way or that way. Everyone can sit there and do that. And I appreciate you tolerating me bouncing those ideas off here. But as a legislative person, as a legislator, go to the time meeting to vote on this, as a committee of the legislature or the budget committee, I have to look at the whole package. And I can see ways of doing this better from a financing deal, from a reconstruction, from a uh, architectural deal, as we discussed. Are you now ready to vote? Amen. But I am, I am telling everyone that the critical element is to make sure that the building is going to support the curriculum policies that are in place and are anticipating. And that I can clearly say it does do that. And while I am not going to give a sales pitch, I'm not 100% on board. Um, I'm well over 51% on board, so I will be supporting this openly as I do now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your, your fine work. Okay. 
All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? That wasn't too long, was it? Yeah. So I have 13 yes and one abstention. Can I make a comment? Not, not that I can outdo my <laughs> over here, but that would be tough. We are committed to hearing from everyone. Um, the door is not closed on this project. If if we have good ideas or ways that we can save money, we want to do that. Um, we are buying books via the technology. We are not buying textbooks. We are doing things differently, just to get your answer in. Um, and, and, and we are committed to doing that. If you tell us and you sit with Nathan and I and you say, there's a hey, have you considered this strategy for bonding or whatever? There's a lot of ideas out there. We want to be able to hear that because that's how this, is, this project has strengthened. Quite frankly, Nathan and I, we just submitted today, I signed the, the document, the A24P, and it's an application that we sent to the Department of Ed because we're not going to just let them tell us there's no money. We're going to continue to do all the paperwork until they're going to be tired of us. And when it comes time to testify at the, at, the, at the legislature in front of House Finance and House Ed around the $50 million bill that's up there now to bring back school aid, you can be rest assured that Nathan and I will be there because we, we're not done yet. We're, you know, yeah, the number's there and the, the Nathan's figured out all the dollars and cents. That, yeah, it's all there, I get that. But we're not done yet. I'm seeking ways in which we can support this project that is, and we haven't talked about kids, you know, but it is so critical to the kids. And we have great kids in this town, and uh, I, I think they deserve it. I, I would agree with Sunny and the rest of you that they deserve this, this opportunity. So thank you. I, thank you. All right, I am going to move us on to um, Born Article 3. And this is to see if the school district will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton School Board and the Seacoast Educational Association, otherwise known as SEA, covering the four-year period from July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2020, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. And you do see the list down there from 2016 to 2017, 239,021 dollars. 2017 to 2018, 254,533 dollars. 2018 to 2019, 252,502 dollars. 2019 to 2020, 250,748 dollars. and further raise and appropriate the sum of $239,021 for the 2016 to 17 fiscal year, such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement. Majority vote required on this. Um, do I have a motion on I'll, this? I'll move that a second. Okay, Steve and Sunny. Any discussion? Tim? This was another item we discussed in our little uh, <coughs> session, and um, I wanted to get it out in public that this, uh, in fact, the day we met was the day after the omnibus ran over the Obamacare Cadillac tax, right? right? But yet it's still an issue because that delayed the Obamacare Cadillac tax, a 40% tax surcharge, some call it, until January 1, 2020. This agreement goes to June 30th, 2020. So I'll give you this opportunity, as I know you want to talk about how you spared the town from having to absorb this uh, onious uh, tax. So. Clearly, at the, at the negotiating table, the, the most important topic for the board's negotiating team was to address the Cadillac tax, the excise tax built into the Affordable Care Act. And 
remember that even though something may take effect from a federal level on January 1, our teacher contracts run, our school year runs, our fiscal year runs July previous to June. So any change that you need to affect for January 1 really must be in place through the open enrollment period that is June leading up to July 1st. And so the 1920 school year is still in play and will still be impacted by this unless legislation changes something again. But the negotiated agreement did identify one thing first, that there would be a committee established of equal representation from the boards and from the union, and that that committee would meet on an annual basis moving forward to consider and explore all alternatives and options to find lower cost plans and avoid the impact of a Cadillac tax, and that they would make those recommendations each year so that we could consider changes to our plans, changes to our carrier, among other things, and that in the absence of agreement or in any situation where the coverages that we're talking about hit a point where the Affordable Care Act was applied and there was an excise tax because the plans were still high cost plans by definition, the teachers would bear the cost of that essential 40% excise on the overage, not the taxpayer. Essentially, the district's contribution would be decreased by that amount and the employees increased by that amount and they would make the commitment to either make the change to a lower cost plan or pay that excise tax so that the taxpayers won't. So that commitment is there. It will it will be in place through 18. It will be in place through January of 20 because the contract uh, extends to June of 20. Beyond that, <clears throat> there's another committee that will meet to talk about their extracurricular stipends. Uh, there were some changes made to the health and in health insurance to save about 20 grand a year. Uh, but the biggest issue was that. And for that, the scale itself will move by half a percent. And those that are on the scale will move a step. Those that are off the scale, we'll see off the top step, we'll see a 1.75% increase in each of the four years of the deal. So, well, I congratulate you on being proactive in addressing this uh, oppressive tax under Obamacare and sparing the taxpayers from yet another hidden tax, <laughs> making that tax fall where it belongs, which is the people that advocated Obamacare. So I thank you for your diligent work once again. I'm done, Madam Chair. Thank you. Michael? Uh, could you tell us for the public's benefit what the percent increase is for the teachers? And you said something about 1.5 for people who weren't going through the steps. Could you explain that again clearly? Yep. If you're off the top, it's a 12-step scale. So if you have either started with Hampton School and continued for 12 or more years, or if you joined us with experience and started somewhere in the grid and have progressed to step 12, once you are at the top step or in your years thereafter, you simply will advance 1.75, 1.75% in each of the four years. If you happen to be a newer teacher, meaning that you've come in with no experience and you're at the beginning of the scale on step one, or you are at any point between one and 12, the scale is going to move by half of 1%, and you get to move up a step. That step is. It's an average 3.75 percent in the grid, so um, so it's a it's a there's a compounding there. It'll be a little better than a four percent increase on uh, on those that are within the grid on average. On average, on average, it's about a two point it's a 2.4 percent average increase uh, if you blend them all together. It's, yeah, I think that's a great, uh, superintendent suggests I remind you that two-thirds of our staff are at step 12 or beyond. So it's a smaller percentage for sure, about a third that are in the grid getting that bigger bump. And that's part of what the teachers have negotiated for decades, to build that scale and to reward with those increases their learning and growing teachers. Two-thirds or more, almost 70% of ours are in the category of off the top. So they'll be getting the 1.75%. <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Are, Very we, good. are we ready for a vote? Yes. Yeah, okay. Indeed. All those in favor? Unanimous. Have that unanimous. Okay, we only have one more because mm -hmm. number five does not involve any money. I move that uh, one half of four be accepted as red. As it's written. 
Yeah. As it's read or as it's written? Well, either way you like it. I don't want to read it. I don't want anyone else to read it. <laughs> May I, I tell you that Article 4 is the same language that you have seen yeah. for, for really now going on two decades or more, as I understand yes. it. Have it's been time, for, it's time for a change. Though, and I understand we've we talked second. about changes. Here's what I want to make sure everyone is clear okay. about. On the screen right now and in your, and in your notes, not only does the language of the article show on the ballot, but so does that information. We want to make sure everyone understands there's no expectation that any of that capital dollar will be spent on Hampton Academy in this cycle because we're, we're proposing a renovation. The single biggest project that we'll undertake is a phased approach to tackle Marston School and replace the roof on the stretch of the original building extending back to the 1975 edition. That's estimated right now at, at a little better than three quarters of a million dollars. Our hope right now is that we will, over the course of this year and next, have this the majority of the $300,000 be itemized or identified for the roof, and that we'd be able to bid that out as a part of the bidding for the project so that we'd find the best costs, the lowest possible costs to do that roof work. Um, because if we kit them all together when we're bidding, they'll do the roof work when they're here doing roof work on the academy project. And that's the lowest cost that we can find. So the, the language speaks for itself, and there's no reference to Hampton Academy. The more beautiful should be next. Uh, as you said, it's, uh, it's been an article that's uh, been the same for a long time. And the only problem I have with it is in the third sentence, engineering services at Hampton's Three school buildings and grounds. Oh, I the think lady's that reading my needs, mind. <laughs> I think that need like Noah. How many times have I read that? Um, the intention is that I, that would say at two. At, at yes. the two, because yep. you're not uh, listing the academy. Right. And with 25 million at the academy, I think you kind of covered your bases there. So I, I would just change that. Do you know how many times we've read these Warren articles? Isn't it funny? <laughs> Believe me. I, we do. You see, that's why it's important that we have these conversations. Rather than say two and leave it vague, I propose that what we'll change the language <laughs> Jerry, to how is many times we read that? at Hampton's Marston and Center School right. buildings that and happens. grounds. Yep. It does, and we appreciate Thank it. You for Thank that. you. No problem. You could just say at the below schools as well. Okay, we'll, we'll, like below. Yeah. we'll, we'll I think we'll like. identify them. <laughs> Thank you. Kudos. Were you reading my mind or were you reading my computer screen? <laughs> I can't even see the screen, and I'm wearing my glasses. And you know what? That's the one where I didn't insist that you guys read. So okay. there you go. Got it anyway, uh, Sandy? Well, well, we read it anyway. That's the point. Kudos for being <laughs> thorough. Thank you. All right. Are we ready? Any yes. more questions? Are we ready We're for ready. a vote? Okay. All those in favor of this Warren article? Opposed? All right. So what do you got? Is that two abstentions or one opposed or no, one abstaining? No, you're abstaining, Sonny? No. All right. So <coughs> we have what's a Brian? Vote. Oh, Brian. And what's Brian doing? Uh, Brian. Brian. Voted no. Voted no. 12-1-1. Okay. 12-1-1. So 12-1-1. It's losing its magic. 12-1-1. The revenues were included. I think they were there last time they are there again in your packet this time. Right now, my revenue projection suggests that there won't be much more than a $10,000. It's actually 9000 and change variance year to year. And I intend that we'll see if we can't find a way to make that go away. So revenue should not be a significant contributor. Uh, it should be essentially flat. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can we keep the rule just do this one more time? Yeah. Just for, for the public that are watching, we're going to do the public hearing on the bond on behalf of the school board on Wednesday night next week, the 13th at 7 in the gym, in the Eastman gym. You folks will be hosting uh, the, the public hearing on the budget Thursday night, the 14th at 7 o'clock in the cafeteria at the academy. And then the deliberative session is Tuesday night, the February, Tuesday night, February 2nd. We'll be back in the academy cafeteria. I want to make sure folks got that. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Okay. Poor Ed Tinker has been here very patient. He's sitting here for one more an article. I know everybody's dying for a break for a couple of minutes. We can But wait. I bet he's dying to go home. So. And he's got a long drive. So. Ed, Oops. thank you for your endurance. If you'd like to join us.
We're going to move on to the Warren articles. We have only one um, CBA that was ratified, so chosen uh, ratified as yet. I have chosen to delay going over the CBAs, Good. and I've reluctantly, but I have put another meeting into next Wednesday. Because the next opportunity for the Board of Selectmen to review the other CBAs will be Monday night. Okay, so again, as we and the Board of Selectmen have not really had any control over the ratification, they've still been in negotiations. So, Madam Chairman, there are three or four work articles that are knockoffs. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do those, but I'm, I'd like to right, get it right, done. Right. I'm you just know, saying. A lot of them next here. on the list, I had the CBAs. Of yeah. all the CBAs, you have five CBAs in there. Right. There's only one. The team says that's been ratified. Night. Right. I'm gonna choose to do them all in one night. I put an extra night into the schedule next Wednesday night. Yeah. So the night before the public hearing, we will go over those and anything that we don't get to on Friday. Ed, did you want to join us? Can we uh, make a request to have the tentative agreements available? I'm sorry? Can we make a request to have the tentative agreements available? Um, Christy has already said that as soon as they are um, ratified, we can have a copy. Oh, great. Thank okay. you. Okay. So what are we looking for? Article 23? Yeah. And it's utility revaluation, right? The utilities, yes. Yeah. Article okay. revaluation. Yeah. That's Article 23 in your packet. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good um, evening, and thank you for being bearing yeah. with us. Um, first, would like to say that the article does relate to um, the continuation of the reval, the 2016 reval, which we're in the process of completing. Um, we've actually stepped up um, our work on that, um, but this part of the reval is as important, um, actually important probably to a lot of other. Um, articles that you're going to be looking at um, in the fact that um, we're trying to update <laughs> values relative to today's, to today's market. Um, the tax effect on a lot of these things may be and probably will be different once the revaluation gets implemented. The utility values are very important. Important in the fact that um, we're required to value all property within the town be it exempt, residential, commercial, or utility, based on fair market value. Um, and that's one thing that, um, as far back as I know, has never been done in Hampton. And I think 2016, based on, again, market conditions and um, everything else that's going on, it would be wise uh, this time around to value all property um, based on that requirement. Um, the cost to do this um, is 225000 Again, the effect on the tax rate, in my opinion, will actually probably be nil based on the benefits of doing that, the ability to use a value that's been developed by a, a, an appraiser that can be defended through the life of the revaluation. Um, the cost to continue using that appraisal will also be cut based on the need to only update those values and not complete a full appraisal report again or complete an appraisal report based on the past. As we have done this past year, as you know, we spent a lot of money on retrospective appraisals based on appeals pending all the way back to 2011. The cost of those appraisals are very much higher based on the need to have multiple appraisals done based on when the appeals become scheduled at the courts. We can't get five appraisals done at the same time for five different value years based on five years of appeals. We have to have those done based on when they're scheduled. Therefore, the cost, as you know, 
can be extreme. Ed, while you're on that subject, not to interrupt you, but how long will those appraisals be good for? What set of years? Well, the values, the values, just like the reval, is based on 2016. Mm -hmm. um, once the equalization ratio is applied years going forward, it equalizes those values to reflect uh, market value, mm -hmm. assessment to sale ratio. Um, in appeal cases, what it would require if appeals do happen, which as you know, the past five years we've right. had very many utility appraisals, it would just be a matter of updating the income and asset portion of the appraisal. Maybe the sales data, um, again, there's not a lot of sales of large utilities, but um, the cost to update is very minimal compared to a full outblown appraisal, which to incur those costs at the time of a reval is the perfect time to do that. That appraisal will be good for the five years as well as the same as the appraisal for all the other properties. It may require some updating, but the body of the appraisal mm -hmm. would be relevant for the ha entire Have we not length. been doing that? Have we been doing evaluations separate on this, so not doing these as part we, of the Well, we reval? haven't done, no, never we, done. We've it. done everything but the utilities, and that really has been a problem. Yeah. I believe, you know, I've been here seven years. Um, we've never done that. We've wanted to. We've attempted to do that. We've never been able to bring forward anything like this. I think, again, based on the timing of everything, this is a perfect time to bring this up, or at least bring <coughs> values so everybody's being treated fairly and equitably, which would be everybody here that owns property. It's not fair that you're relative your your value of your property is reflects market value when the utilities don't or another type of property but that's the case and that's been the case for I think is there any as value as right now built in there for them the appraisals yeah I mean the utilities right well what we do is we've had to bring them up to market value but well, currently are, we, is there any value in there but this value we've we've attempted through our office and through myself is to develop a value to hopefully reflect some resemblance to market value. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, as you've seen, the appeals happen and those values that I've created or have been created through a couple of different valuation processes that don't reflect fair market value. Mm -hmm. They're not defendable, therefore we need to go out and hire right. somebody to do those appraisals. And as you know, $120,000 later this year, mm -hmm. that's what it took to defend those cases. And it could have been more, but what we did was settle for an extended amount of time to save costs on our end because the costs were getting a little bit out of control and to continue a yearly uh, um, defense of those, it would have been... And this would resolve that. Wait, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the 120 was all in defense of, of assessments that we did, tried to do ourselves over the last three, four, five, six years? Or Well, it, it's not so much do ourselves, but the utilities have always been, um, again, the state gives us values, but the values are based on a unit method or a value of assets, depreciated assets, which has no relationship to market value. At least it may in some years, depending on market conditions, but what I'm saying is it's not developed through the market value approach, which we're required to do. So because of that, those values are very low. Um, for an example, um, one of the utilities, um, the state had an assessment on it of $11 million, for example. Um, this was one that we recently settled in an appeal. Um, through through our work at the office, we, we set a value um, quite a bit higher, of course, because we need, you know, the 11 was just not realistic. Um, when we had our appraisal done, the appraisal came in at $21 million. Our assessment was around $19 million. So it can, you can see the difference between the unit method and fair market value. Mm -hmm. So to leave $10 million on the table or whatever that value is, is not good to begin with, but then again, it's not fair, it's not equitable, it's not the way 
that we need to value property. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing everything else. We need to do the utilities as well. Okay. Tim, then Jerry, then Sonny, then Mike. Good evening, Ed. Um, if my memory isn't too faulty, I seem to remember that last year we put money in your budget to do an appraisal for 2016, the reappraisal. For the the residential and commercial properties, all types of property. There was, but also, not a, there was also an affiliated warrant article as well, relative to reappraisals, right? To the revaluation, right. right. So this kind of stands out to me with the question of, well, why didn't we put utilities in that calculation last year? The, the reason we didn't was that, again, we, it's a very detailed, complex process. We were in the negotiating um, with several companies, several individuals to, to complete that process. It was not available. We had nothing concrete that we could do a warrant article last year. That's for So you had no concrete dollar number, is that what you're saying? Uh, dollar number and concrete vendor that was going to do it for us at that this point. This is a separate vendor who will be doing this. A commercial, uh, I'm sorry, a utility appraiser will or be specialized. Right. So exactly. it would not have been the same appraiser. Different process. Well, I understand that, but when, when, when it was brought to us, we were talking, and at least I got the sense that the conversation was about, well, this is going to be the cost for the state-required reappraisal of all properties in town. Okay. Other now, than, now I'm hearing. Well, that's not quite right. We didn't include utilities in that. Right, just like so. That conversation we had last year was kind of like misunderstood, at least by me, that that was going to cover the entire reappraisal of the town as required by state law. No, I didn't take but, that. So I misunderstood that last year. I was confused, I guess. Right. The, the, okay. The vision appraisal was. So for, now I'm no longer confused on that point. Okay. All right. Now, it says in here the town has now received proposals for completion of these complex annual uh, appraisal reports. Correct. And then it's going to list. Those are the properties that you're talking about getting appraisals of, that list? Yes. Okay. <coughs> it also says in here that you're required to complete appraisals on all property types. Mm -hmm. uh, is this going to be the last request for money, or is there going to be some other appraisal type that I'm confused about that hasn't been put forth? The last appraisal type. Okay. So when you say you're required to do appraisals on all properties in town, does that also include government buildings? Yes, it does. All we right. value every property in the town of Hampton. And that includes which is easements as well, right? Everything. 90, 9,900 parcels to date that we will be valuing, reassessing, not including new development that's taking place. So yes, we, we revalue every single piece of property in the town. So I can look forward to coming down soon and getting a total valuation of, of the easements and other lands under the custodianship of the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Well, you can get that now, but you, you're talking about But I want the new the, number, yeah. That would, uh, those new numbers will be implemented in the summer Excellent. of 16. Thank you so much, Ed. This is the last shot for this appraisal. No more expenses looking forward on this, right? Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Jerry. Okay. Right. Now, this figure of 225,000, yes. has this yep. been bid out, or how did we arrive at Well, this? it's, 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 it's mean, very... You know, I mean, I, did we go out and... and well, you, you've got to understand that, that, first of all, a nuclear power plant, there are maybe three, four people in the whole country that can do those type of appraisals. Yeah. So there's really not a bidding process. Um, the, although there's three or four, we were lucky to get one from Boston, who is considered one of the best to complete the appraisal for us. The other utilities, we have secured um, Steve Traub from, um, also from Massachusetts, to complete all those other ones. Um, it's, it's, it's not so much a bidding process, but a, uh, well, a, it's, it's a search to find someone. Yeah, identifying well, qualified right. assessors. And, 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 and then, then how would you to talk to them? Or, or <coughs> Tell them what we need done and give some idea about it. Yep, explained everything that we needed done, then the companies we needed, what we needed of those companies from those companies, which which again requires uh, a lot of uh, gathering of financial information, yeah. asset information. I mean, it's a very drawn out process. So did they give you something back? I mean, that's in writing that said this is what we'll do it for. Or how did that we've, we've been given. Um, 
in 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 writing the the total cost to do those appraisals. So on any one of the selected two or three qualified candidates. Right. We've we've chosen we've chosen the two that that we feel would be best doing these and and that's where the two twenty five. Now is this this warrant article doesn't break down the cost for each one of these. You have I mean, this is 225 in total. It's like a blanket order agreement, you know? Right. So what is every one of these, I mean, approximately, can you tell me, what do they run? Um, well, the, the nuclear... Yeah, approximation. Approximate nuclear power plant is between 100 and 150,000 dollars. Between 100 and 150. Yeah. And the rest of them? The others will be between 75 and 100,000. I believe it's 85,000 is the um, determined cost for those appraisals. Doesn't that add up more than 225? Well, between 100, 150, and 85, so we're we're talking 225. I mean, I don't think it would be 150, but we have 85,000 and 140 would be 225. Well, you so. got 100, let's say, for the power plant, and you can, you've only got 125 for the rest. I, well, six. again, the six are 85,000 for the six. six. Or 85. So 85 and 106 is no. No, together total. Together. Six oh, I'm totally sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. As a group, 85,000. Okay, one one additional question. Ed. Thank yep. you for that breakdown. The Seabrook Station nuclear power plant. Right. We have an agreement with them. I think it's called a payment in lieu of taxes. Correct. And they pay us, I guess, two hundred and forty thousand a year or thereabouts for the next five years. Mm -hmm. yep. Why do we bother assessing them? We're not going to get a dime benefit from it. Not a dime. Because that payment in lieu of taxes is in place until 2020, right? So again, we can't we can't go back to them to petition for any increase because of market value increase. So why not wait till 2020? To well, do it? Again, the reason for that is 2016's evaluation year. All properties need to be revalued, exempt, government. It 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 it, it doesn't pick and choose what should be or shouldn't be. If we're going to do utilities, we need to do all utilities. That appraisal will be used in the future as a base for valuation for the nuclear power plant, our assets that are located in Hampton. It, it's, it's, it's part of the process that needs to be done. All these appraisals don't look at just one year. They look at multiple years. To, to wait till 2020 to do it, 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 it just doesn't work for the town. The town needs to know the value. And Ed, correct me if I'm not thinking the right way, it also will add to the base. I'm assuming that a fair market appraisal right now is higher than what it would have been a year ago. So uh, Utility-wise, yeah, I couldn't say for sure, but you would potentially assume that, yes, I would. Okay. So that that would add to the total base of our valuation well, the, the, as the town. The town's total valuation, correct? Right. Yeah. Even more significantly, he's he's basically making guesses at these appraisals now, and they're right. challenged. He has no, no, exactly. no means of defending I'm it. Spending money. So right. we're, we're spending money, having to put up a non-defense defense, and basically on the negotiation stage. By the time it all said and done, the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars he's asking for is probably spent in a larger form hidden by these activities of everyone challenging the baseless appraisals, essentially. And now we'll have a basis not, for defending it. And right. I mean, we, if we have the to only, defend... The only thing gonna... I would want, Ed, is that the 20, the, any subsequent reappraisal process we go through, let's have a true number rather than, you know, separate buckets that we've been experienced in mm -hmm. as a result of my confusion on this point. Okay? Right. So I am 100%, well, 98% in support of this. Okay. okay. Let's finish off with Jerry because we still have Sonny and Mike. The, uh, the thing that I have come to learn is that the state does appraisals for all utilities for every town mm -hmm. and city and state. And Ed's right. They use the unit cost method. Um, and they've evaluated, and they've got us here, Hampton, it's on their website, PRA's website, for the Seabrook, or Nextera, Nextera Energy Seabrook at 12,313,000. And in that PRA website, it says, um, municipalities may also utilize these values for their public utility property. 
So what I'm driving at is, since we're not going to get a dime, it might add to our valuation. It might move us from whatever, two billion nine hundred ninety-nine thousand to some, some place beyond three billion. We're not going to get a dime from anybody because of any uh, value added to the assessment. So for between now and then, the next time we we evaluate, which is five years, I guess, right? Well. Let's hope it's five years. It could be. It could be two. It could be three. Year two thousand and twenty. Let's do a full up assessment on it. Until then, why waste one hundred twenty five thousand or a hundred thousand? We use the state's assessment. There are cities and towns that are doing it. The smaller ones. The fact is, those are the rules. And if we skip a year or something like that, and they come back to us and say later, well, you didn't do the reevaluation. You know, re evaluation. Well, we uh, didn't do it. Got a qualified supplier, Jerry. It's about okay. expense it's just, mitigation. It's uh, yes. all right, gentlemen. Right, well, that's I'm my gonna, point. All right, I'm going to move to Sonny, who had his hand up. Yeah, Brian. Okay. I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at it from the point of view of the voters. Mm -hmm. You're going to vote on an academy. You've got eight Warren articles here, basically. You know what I mean? What I would prefer to do is to put a one bond issue, put all these items into it, if it adds up to three million, give the voters an opportunity, you know, spell it out in English what the needs are. Because on the utilities, they're all going to file for abatements. They have lawyers on staff. They're going to fight you every inch of the way anyway. But I mean, if you, I'm just looking at it from the voters' point of view. By the time they get to go up to Lawrence, they're going to be a little tired. But but my point to the voters, which are you people as well, is that this this Art Warren article is is very important in the in the in the whole scheme of the tax rate <laughs> and the equitable layout of, of the tax rate and your taxes. Yeah, to I not, understand that. I'm just suggesting that you put one Warren article for a bond issue for the amount of money that you need to take care of these and one. give the voters it's a one. one clear number for every reappraisal cycle, right? <laughs> I agree. Well, listen, that, that could potentially be the case next time. The right. problem, next time. The right. problem time, is yeah. that the town has never done this. Right. The well, town, we're breaking new ground. Right, so we've it's and taken us two years ketchup. to do it, but... It's playing catch-up at this yeah. point. Going forward, you can yeah. put it all yeah. in one, but right yeah. now, we already passed where we are with one appraisal, and this wasn't part of it. Matt, Jay, let's break ground and vote on this. No, I, I Well, Mike has a question. Next and, and to you, Mr. Oh, Jones. I'm sorry. Keep speaking up six I didn't times. see you again. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Michael. You forgive fine. me, Mr. Pierce, please. Michael, I beg go for it. I, uh, I agree with Mr. No Zanoy on this issue. You can't do anything with the nuclear power plant until 2020. Thanks to agreement made by the town, it's on a pilot program. Good or bad, it's there. So therefore, reappraising the nuclear power plant, they might as well reappraise, reappraise my old car. What value is it? It's worthless. It's, it's not worth a single dime to anybody in Hampton. It's not worth a single dime to the nuclear power plant people, one way or the other, well, until 2020. For, for the total valuation of the town, for equalization purposes, for state education tax purposes, they look at town's total value. Yeah. If you're going to appraise everybody, and first of all, the, this is an exempt piece of property. However, we do assess it. It needs to be valued. The plant is paying a pilot. However, it needs to be valued. Any exempt property gets revalued. It's important to have a value that can be used going forward. In my opinion, it will. this Warren article will pay for itself in the fact that your assessments of all utilities will reflect fair market value, which has never been done in Hampton, ever. But the thing of it is, like Mr. Zanoy said, the state will provide you their Those appraisal of but, the property. Yeah, but, but I just been, explained to you that time. the Excuse values me, are so out of line that you're leaving you're leaving eight ten million dollars on the table by using a state value that has no relationship to fair market value. If I'm valuing your property and 
as in fi to fair market value in today to, for today, mm -hmm. and not doing anyone else's, is that fair? Is it equitable? It's not. You're not going to be able to, Chuck. You're not going to be able to use this to tax on a per thousand basis. Right. This new this nuclear power plant. You can Madam show Chair, it in your evaluation. We've about this issue for uh, four or five years. I believe Jerry's we have. I agree with you. I think that. It, it's clear how you gentlemen feel. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Bede. When we get finished, we'll let you know. I'm sorry. I don't agree with your explanation there. Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, I excuse think me. I have the floor. No, Thank the you. chair has the floor right now. I'm calling this discussion. I haven't closed. yielded the chair to anybody yet. Well, I'm taking the... Well, you may not. Madam I'm not chair. finished my Madam question. Chair, the gentleman ought to be allowed to finish. Well, He's only it's, spoken it's once. Clear. It's clear how you feel, Mike. And Jerry, it's clear how you feel on this issue. I but I agree. I think we've had long enough discussion on this issue. And I, 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 I will yield, but not because it's fair. You let those people on the other side talk for many times, and it finally got to me one time, and I was on there just for a little bit. I'm very upset about that, Madam Chairman. But go ahead, do whatever you want to do. I'm going home anyway. Just sit on the next side, on the other side. Yeah, sit on the other side next wait time. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. I Gentlemen. don't agree. I don't agree with this decision, this, well, this parliamentary please. decision you're making. I don't agree with Mr. Pierce's position, but I want to hear him out. He he hasn't spoken very long at all. Madam Chair, I'd say the discussion on this Warren article. Is closed unless I there is to anyone that who has not spoken. No, I've had enough of that. You let Mr. Beam butt in all the time, which is not proper at all. No, he's Michael, not running. He's Michael, not running. He's not running, running this committee. I don't think. Right. Right. Good, good night. Have a good one. Good night, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. with us tonight. Bringing it back, I think at this point in time, it's just something I want to throw out there to all of you. We're in the 11th hour, not by choice, on this budget and on these Warren articles. And if at a point you drive a point home, and once that point is made and taken, stop killing it. We don't have time left to spend an hour on every single point. Is there anyone who has not spoken on, on this particular Warren article that would like to speak? You can reflect your opinion in your vote. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Do I have a motion? I will motion to approve as written and reviewed. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Post. Mike's not here to, to vote. Yeah, to vote, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's they left before the vote? Mike was also not here and allowed to give new wisdom that might not have been otherwise stated. Okay. But he wasn't given the chance to do it. And I seriously object to him being silenced because he might have brought up a point we hadn't discussed yet. We don't know that unless we listen. Thank you. I think at this point in time, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you, Ed. Thanks. Thank, thank you for going. joining thank us, Ed. I think at this point in time, we're going to take a 10 minute break before we proceed. Uh, back at 9 20. Things would actually sit down. All right, we are back. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again. And we are going back to Warren article discussion here and approvals. All right, um, going down the list, we did utility revalve. So, human service agencies. Freddie, you representing that? I guess I've got to, Madam Chairman. Okay, well, somebody has to. Yeah, I agree. And please don't feel like you got to go back and forth. You can stay there all oh. the rest of the night. Appreciate, appreciate it. Believe me. Until yeah. I get to the, the, the hospital tomorrow, I'll, I'll feel much better when I get I'm there. On what? Fred, 
Sir, all of these agencies on this list, which total $174,475, you get a review of their financials and well as well as a statement relative to their benefits that, right here. that the town of Hampton receives from them. Yes. You reviewed that exhaustively? Yep. Okay, so therefore, Madam Chair, I move $174,475 for Article 24 as written. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> oh, let's go second. Now for discussion. I've got one big giant question. Shoot. Are you going to move this question, Mr. Bean? <laughs> Crossroads. Crossroads. How many people did we get in there in the last year? Uh, well, we're still counting, but uh, I, was, I believe it's in excess of 30. It's in excess of 30? Yeah. Okay. They've been doing a bang-up job for us, and they, they've put a lot of people there. We've had three this week okay. so far. Nope. You know where I was going with that? Uh, I do. We've had years with nobody, in which case yep. it would We have been watching with due out. diligence. Okay. And um, I know that everybody else on this list, we get our value out of. Oh, we do. Definitely. There was a figure years ago that for every dollar we give, we get $11 back. As Actually, beneficial. I think that's increased at this well, point. Well, judging on the year that I had that figure, I'm sure yep. it has. Yeah. But in case anybody's ever wondering what do we get out of it, the crossroads is always the one I, I look at because they go through spurts where they don't take they they don't take anybody. And well, they, they, oh, they have take uh, from areas. They do have a different system now to allocate space. And that's coming out of Summersworth. So how is that working out? Well. Some weeks it works fine, some weeks it doesn't work at all. But it uh, works. And when it doesn't work at all, we end up sending most of our recipients to an agency in Massachusetts where they actually receive better help Is that than they do from Crossroads and these other agencies. Is that in Lawrence? It's Lawrence and Lowell, are the two agencies we send them to. Okay. Well, as, as long as we're getting up, you know, as long as we're getting something out of Crossroads. We are. All right. Then, um, Jerry? Yeah, there's two of these that did increase, Fred. Um, they did. Safe Place increased, and I, uh, Rockingham Meals on Wheels increased. I really have no problem with this whole warrant article. However, didn't we have a policy that if somebody incre incrementally increased, they would either come in and, and, and meet with the selectmen and or to put a separate warrant article in of their increase? Uh, part of the warrant articles that uh, submitted in March. Uh, the, the town did have a policy that indicated anyone who had an increase had to place a warrant article in for the increase. The board yeah. changed that last year. Okay. Um, okay. Just in the case of Safe Place, there's actually no increase there. Yeah, but I mean, did they merged? Did, did, well, they went from 55 to 75. Well, but they merged with Seacoast Assault Services. That's where the other $2,000 <laughs> came from. Oh. They merged the two, two sums together. Did we right. have the other it people on this increase. list at one time? Yes. They're on the bottom. Yeah. It's a funky Zero name, though, Salt Services. I don't see that. <laughs> oh, Seacoast <laughs> Assault <laughs> Services? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Okay, Safe good. Place to assault services. Very good. Yeah. And yeah. the other one, uh, Rock and Ham Meals on Wheels? Yeah. Uh, the Meals on Wheels, uh, they requested a, an, a, uh, an increase, and, and the selectmen authorized it okay. uh, under their, so under they their don't current have to policy. Put a the, the problem with Meals on Wheels is that they have a policy that if you don't pay them what they ask for, they don't serve the community at all. Well, that policy has been in effect now for about 10 years. <laughs> that's so not good. We, we make, try to make sure, even if we have to find money, to make sure so that we they don't, do we, it. The, the, the selectmen evidently preempted or usurped and, uh, or changed or did away with that policy of having to put they, it They've modified it, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. If, all right. if you're a brand new individual you've never been on before, you do have to go through a warrant article to get in. Yeah, yeah. Unless the selectmen modify that policy. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. Well, that's what we said when we changed it to this I know. prior policy. All, right. All of these line items were separate warrant articles, and there was a great discussion years ago, as you may recall. I'm going Let's on. consolidate them, and we can do that if we have this policy. And part of the fulcrum of that policy was that very thing that was modified. But I still support the warrant article. Most I wish the selectmen would actually revert well, back to the original well, policy for the really deal. The original policy was that they were all in the budget. No, right? I meant the original right. policy absolutely. where it was the consolidation policy. I'm talking yeah, about. actually, Sandy is absolutely right. She's the original absolutely policy correct. is that That's they right. were in 
they were in the budget. Anybody wanting money from us yes. would come before us. And, and I misspoke. I meant to say the consolidated yep. policy. You okay. misspoke? Yes, I did. All right. I do that from time to time. I'm ready to move on. Me too. Okay. Unless we 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 have we anybody else? Yeah. 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> Brian has something to say. Uh, I just had one question. Did we actually meet with everyone? There was one of these that we never heard from? We've heard from all of them, and I've talked to each of them individually, on, either in person or on the telephone. Okay, because I know it, I'm we had to, to chase my notes a couple there of them one. down simply because they've in the process of either reorganization or changing executive directors. Mm -hmm. So we did have to chase two down in order to get that final the final right, two. In. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else with a question? No. Okay. All those in favor? Is this for an article? Okay. Unanimous. And that's a vote of 13. All right, Fred, moving on. Who's next? The compensated leave Number. trust fund. That article will be withdrawn. withdrawn? Just move. The, the, the money is currently in the budget uh, on the, uh, the two items dealing with separation of employees. And that money, as in the past, where it was available, will be transferred over. So the selectman had previously said this article would be removed if that was the case. So it will be removed. Okay. Uh, 27, and this is just... What about 25? That's going, we're doing that Thursday. Okay, so going to 27, please so that's going to be special be revenue fund. This is just house cleaning. I'll yeah. move article 27 for $90,000 as written. Second. What, what is it? Article 27, 27. for $90,000, police forfeiture file. Oh, I mean, that's as written. Yeah. All those in favor? Well, you can't call for a vote, Tim. Chairman, the chairman has to call for a vote. Uh, Madam Chairman, you'll have to. Uh, that, was not, just, that, that wasn't a call for a vote. Have, that was a have poll. Get, okay, have to get gentlemen, a I'm slowing it down because remember, these are our votes, all right? Yes. Unlike the discussions we've had at previous sessions, and we do not have our secretary live, so it's important that we identify who's doing what. All right. All right. You guys get terrible after nine o'clock. Um, I seconded it. Nick, uh, Nick seconded no, it. I moved it. You moved it. Nick seconded it. Correct. All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you. Good. Thank you. That was easy. Article 28. I move that we table that for further consideration. Well, that's not. 28 isn't next. Good. 20, uh, 28 is Thursday. 29, the Town War Memorial. I'll uh, move the sum of, uh, of $5,000 on Article 29, yeah, as yeah. written. I'll second it. Discussion? All right. Uh, Jerry? I'm 100% I'm in favor of this article, except for its location. That location has been cited by the charrettes that have been done in the past for a very developmental type uh, piece of real estate. It's east of the library. It's west of the fire stations. We could use it for an administrative building, commercial space. If we're going to build a war memorial. We should do it on High Street Cemetery. That's my opinion. And I'd be in favor of it. Unfortunately, we don't have statutory authority to do that. It was on that land. He is a man. We should acquire it. <laughs> yeah. Any other discussion on that? Okay. So this is actually going to be put on the old town hall right. land. Real estate. Filet mignon area. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's kind of like carving out a little piece of contiguous land there, isn't it? Well, actually, that entire parcel, including the parking lot, the, uh, the old courtroom, uh, the old court building, uh, all the way up to the two pieces of land that the school would like to acquire in the parking lot up and back, uh, the playground, uh, the fire station, that's all one parcel of land. Right. That's a big parcel. parcel. And one contiguous parcel. We've had three buildings on it in the past. Yeah. Two of them were removed. Uh, the library would like to reserve the building where the courthouse was. And this building, we had talked to the American Legion, we talked to the board, and the general consensus was Let's see if we can plan something that makes sense and involve the Legion and, and the veterans organizations in town. And if that works, it works. If not, then maybe we need to find another location. 
just go back on the on the front lawn where the courthouse used to be. This would be on the next lot where the to old town hall used to be. Oh, oh you're going to move it towards the fire station. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's. Uh, right, so that, that how large is, so. a monument are they planning on? That they haven't decided. Um, we have one of the things that we we're talking about is to um, honor everyone who has engaged either in the militia in the towns of 1638 up through the armed forces of today. Uh, we have well over 2,000 names that are not currently on any monuments in town. Mr. Cummins? So, Two? Pardon? How many did you say? Over, over 2,000 names of veterans that are not being honored in town. And, and the monument doesn't have to be that large, but we thought of something, either a circular monument or where stones could be placed around a central stone or something of that nature, so it could be expandable. Um, but it's going to be up to a committee to decide that. Uh, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. Uh, we made a mock-up of one that was based upon the United States Military Cemetery in Florence, which is a very nice cemetery. But someone's going to have to sit down and decide how it's going to be designed, what it's going to look like, what it's going to contain. That Warren article couldn't be written location to be determined, subject to design? Yeah, like well, I that's mean. the one that we designated. Oh. Uh, if we need to designate something else, we can come back and change that. I, I, but we need to have some place to start, and, and that was important. There was some place to start. Plus, it's the middle of the governmental area of town, which is normally where those monuments would be located. I know, but we have so few parcels left in the center of town, and that's a very valuable one. You can always do away with the cemetery commission and give that authority to the selectman, and then they could put the, put the facility no, up there. I'm not, not suggesting that. I'm, I want to see it succeed. Yeah. I just see that, you know, more than, one, more than one person has already brought that up. Well, there's not much land left in town to do any of these things. It has to be someplace that's in the open where you mm -hmm. can have ceremonies. It's difficult to find a piece. We've looked. You know, They're just not available. Yeah, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, they're all done at the high school. And all the parades yeah. start there. They come by there. It's, it's, it may be that they'll come back and say, let's use this piece of land rather than this piece of land. But we needed to start with something. And that's all this is intended to do, is to start with something. All right. Once, end up there. once this is voted on, You'd have to have another warrant article to change the location. Well, we could do that. I would think unless, that's unless you put words in here to say that tentatively, tentatively a location has been suggested, and then yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is put like the word tentative in. You must well just take the location out. Yeah, that's but true. It, but the way it reads now, it's just, you know, the selectmen expect. It doesn't say it, it doesn't bind. Right, it says expect. No. Yeah. Yeah. It, doesn't, it bind doesn't bind us to this particular piece of property. That's all I'm getting at, to be specific, that it shouldn't bind you in case you change the location it does bind based it. on the design. No. It's, okay. it's, it's, it doesn't say it shall go here. It's right, just expect it. there's, there's no required wording in here. Right. It's permissive. So wouldn't, wouldn't it take some discussion with the cemetery trustees, I guess, to sit down with them? Uh, the town has already attempted to do that in the past and was turned down. I wonder why. It's a cemetery. I because guess. they have, <laughs> they need the lots to put yeah. our citizens in when they pass yeah, but they away. They have that feel where we, the ceremonies this are. This is going to take up room, Jerry. This is going to take up some room. Yeah. And, and, and having been a cemetery superintendent, I can tell you that if I had my ops, uh, I wouldn't have put a war memorial in the middle of a municipal cemetery. I'd put it someplace else. <coughs> and it would be someplace where people could see it right. and mm. visit it. I'm going to see it in High Street Cemetery. No. Tim? This is too amorphous to me. I mean, the, the, the location is, is designated, yet uh, how big it's going to be is unknown. It's a it's a valuable piece of property in my mind. It's already a contiguous piece of land that could be used for other uh, more valuable uh, practical reasons. Uh, Tax yielding. A, a what building? <laughs> Tax yielding. I mean, if you put it in the industry, commercial building. Yeah. Well, that would be a more practical reason among many other potential yeah. practical yeah, reasons. Yeah, you make a commercial office uh, building. You know, if we ever take over that shell station on the corner, it might be a great place for it because everybody goes by that, right? Mm -hmm. Including the parade. That's a great So, you know, why should we lock into this particular piece of property? Uh, 
I, I think this idea is, is, is too half-baked to fund. That's my opinion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, just a few questions. Um, it says partial fund. What was the anticipated total cost of the project? I don't know. It has to be planned. Okay. Um, and then if the project were to go through and be on that parcel of land, who would be in charge of maintenance? Would that go into Parks and Rec? It would be either on a Parks and Rec or Public Works. Okay. One of the two. Those are my questions, Madam they Chair. They both have contracts to do land management. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anybody else? Why can't we just take that sentence out? Those selectmen expect to dedicate the town owned land that was the site of the old town hall on Winnicott Road for the erection of the memorial. Oh, well, I think that's why we can't. Well, I mean, she's, she's suggesting. I'm just that saying, why can't, why, well. Why it can't be edited? Why can't We, we can't have to vote up or down on what's in front of us. Right, we well, can't change it. Yeah. We'd have to do that at the town meeting. <laughs> at the deliberative session? Yeah. Well, this is to go to public hearings, right. correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, we can only vote up so, and down. So we vote, can't vote to, to have it go forward either. to the public hearing, and then when we do our final vote, then do our final vote. We can't change it to the public hearing, but it could be theoretically changed at the literature session, but not in a way that changes the substance. Right. And, right. of course, the land itself would be likely deemed as substantive and not changeable. I agree. If, if you want to make a recommendation to the selectman, I'll be happy to carry it back. Yeah, my recommendation was would be to more fully bake the idea. I, right. The idea itself I kind of like, but it's not baked enough to fund. Well, unfortunately, one of the problems you have in, in doing something like this is that you have a, a, a group of organizations in the community who have to take part and participate in the planning. Until it's planned, uh, it's not going to be sufficient to vet. And, and it's just one of those things. That which comes first, the plan or the memorial? Well, I vote for the plan coming first. That's why the article's here. It's $5,000 for planning. Planning. It doesn't, doesn't say that, does it? It's yeah. Not, uh, yeah. yeah. Partially construction. Planning and construction. It costs less than $5,000, well then you've the got some money. Of land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, I, if it were $5,000 for a plan, that might be too much money, but I'd be much more favorable if you said, let's throw some money at generating a plan. I'd be favorable to that. But it says it's just partial. It says 5000 to provide partial funding. For planning and construction, construction. and it also allocates uh, you know, a very valuable piece of property. So if they don't spend the $5,000, they can now, move that. Now, one at a time, hands over. up, please. Thank you. Jerry? No, no, I, I just I agree with uh, them uh, that, that I think uh, we all like the idea. We all like the idea. We all like this idea. We don't. I don't like the location. I think it ought to be. If we could get that location edited out of here and make this thing such that the location can be selected, you know, um, in, in some manner uh, through committees or through uh, organizations that uh, a lot of people have an opportunity to pass their opinion on. Next all is to produce a detailed plan. I'd be happy to buy into that because I do like the idea. Yeah. <coughs> We're also taking this out of the unexpended funds, correct? Correct. Still taxpayer money. Yeah. Mm. It all is. Yeah. All right. I think we're, well, be a tough vote. I think <coughs> all around the table I hear that we like the idea and the concept, but there's a lack of a plan. It's an easy no vote for me, Madam Chair. And, and I'm um, ready to cast it. I'm sure the veterans will appreciate it. Well, the veterans can know that I'm in favor of the idea. I just want to see the detailed plan. I'm defending the taxpayers just as they were when they put on the uniform and put a gun in the hand, just as I did back then. I do now. So did I. Okay, so we're all in favor of that point, but not in this. <coughs> not in favor of this warrant item. Well, as, I think as I said, that's that's where my vote is cast. You can <laughs> okay. vote as you will. We understand. I think we're ready for a vote. Yeah. All right, all those in favor of this warrant article. All those, well, wait a minute, let me take a. Okay. Favors, yeah. Bill, we did favor. Yeah, the selectmen did vote to do tally votes. What are we voting on? Yes or yeah, no? Yeah, just keep this your hands yes. up because I have to yes count because it's, yes. it's a divided vote. So it's Bean, Nick Bridal, Scott Blair, Sonny Kravitz, Jim O'Loughlin. 
Sandra, Sandra Nickerson, Nickerson, who has several, shockingly, several and veterans, Bob Ladd. Several veterans in her family, two of which just came home from well, the Middle East. Well, I assure East. you, with a name like Jones, I can probably outnumber you. Two on that of one. which just came home from the Middle East. Thank you very much. All right, good to have him back. And Bob Ladd for that vote as well. Yes, I said Bob Ladd. Okay. okay, and I've got Bob. So I've got Phil, Nick, Scott, Sonny, Jim, Sandy, and Bob. Correct? All right. And we have 13 here, so it passes. Did I have any abstentions? How many did you count? Well, yeah, he's absent. We have 13 people. Here. Got 13 here. We're voting in the favor. Huh? How many voted in favor? Seven. Seven. Thank you. That's what I just said. Now I know. <coughs> okay, and I'm sorry, were there any abstentions? <coughs> None? Okay. No, the rest of us are all being So the other opposed. six were no. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Although I could say that. Are we doing uh, Article 31 if, next? If, if there was some changing no, of the words, that the, the other six could come agenda. on board. Look at this. All oh, right. Scrolling down the list of one articles she sent. <laughs> All right, and the last one, and I know you guys are just craving for more, but it's the uh, CATV franchise yeah. fees. Also just known as Article 31, the dirty one. Dirty one. Okay. So were there not more that we were doing on tonight? No. There were the going to be the, the CBAs, the collective bargaining agreements, but they are not ready. Thank you. We can knock off the hot, we can knock Article off that hazardous waste thing too. Article thirty one. I know you're chomping at the bit. The rest will be Thursday. Move as written. What, what are we doing now? Madam Chair, just for clarification, I was just more along the lines discussing the sewer bond, Article nine. Oh, yeah, I Which took that off. Yeah, I, okay. off. I said that at the beginning of the night. Yeah. That's I off must have missed Thursday. That. I apologize. Why is it off? It's off because we, that has to do with DPW, and there was no sense in bringing him in twice. Oh, okay. Okay, okay Madam Chair, I'll My make a motion to uh, move Article 31 as written. Second that motion. Seconded. This is the one that increases the... From 25 to 40 percent. Yes, it's on page seven. Yeah. Yeah. Draft. All right. Shall the town of Hampton vote to change the percentage distribution of franchise fees received from cable TV provider as noted under Article 16 of the 2013 annual town meeting, so that 40 percent instead of 25 percent of the funds received from the franchise fees are placed in the Hampton Cable TV local revolving fund and are allowed to accumulate from year to year and shall not be considered to be part of the town's unassigned fund balance in according with the provisions of RSA 31-95-H as previously noted. The balance of the franchise fees received by the town under the Cable TV franchise agreement are to be deposited as revenue in the general fund to reduce taxes. Fred, anything you want to say about this one? The selectman had us do a six-year pro forma on the current expenses for the cable TV, <coughs> Channel 22, and the school channel, and our, the town's contribution to help the school channel. And if the fees are not increased sometime in the latter part of 2016, we will run out of money to continue the use of Channel 22. Yeah. I, I I think it makes sense. I mean, we had the old formula when we weren't, we didn't have the schools involved. Right. Schools <coughs> came to us. Now we're splitting it off and giving some to the schools. So it right. makes sense to increase what we take from the general fund. Well, it is a PEG channel. PEG is public, education, and government. Right. Right. Those three have the right to participate in this fund. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but I'm saying we only had one entity to support right. before. Right. Essentially. We have two. Hands, Jerry. Hands. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sonny, yeah. he had I've got his a hand question up. about Channel 13. You know, I I get tired of seeing the lunch menu. <laughs> right. Fred doesn't get hungry. Enjoy seeing a photograph. Of it's Jerry. outside my control. Guy, I can't. Yeah. You like the way I look? You like the lunches? Or? I, I do appreciate <laughs> lunch though. It would have seemed to me that a, the high school would would do a community channel much better. The, the high school and the the, the way the cable TVs contract is yeah, with Comcast is that the high school has to share the channel with the elementary school. They have not done so because they have not connected to the net. And until they appropriate money to do that, that probably will not happen. So that makes it easier for us. 
Any other questions on this, Scott? Yeah, just, um, I, I was wondering what would the dollar impact was. You know, this the percentages, but a voter reading this, they don't, don't really know, they don't have an appreciation for how much it is. That's because so, it does this. Yeah, and, yeah but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the better part of $13,000, $14,000 is what, if you take what happened this year and apply this, you know, the 15% to that, it's, it's about $13,000, $14,000. It's, it it it's all went by percentage because it copied the previous warrant out. Yeah. Okay. But just FYI, I mean, it doesn't. It's not a. Wait a minute. We not get a we, uh, we get we get checks periodically, right? Yeah. We do. Yeah. What's the, what's the sum total number. of the check? Eighty-two thousand. So we get. That's one check. They they they, they vary in size. Right. It's quarterly. No, I would. Uh, the, I think it's quarterly. I think it was eighty-two thousand through November. So and I annualized that to eighty-nine thousand. Okay. And then I said. 15% of that is $13,000. So gotcha. it's not huge money, but it, it's... No, it has to do with subscribership. So you get correct. Yeah, the what they get, the place, and right. that that's constantly flu you know, fluctuation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's 80000 you're saying, but that's with the current percentage. Well, and, and the, you have to remember that they change the rates almost every quarter. Yeah. Yeah. And when they do that, they have people who drop from tier down to another tier, which changes the mix. Okay. It's fluid. Very. Tim. Good. Thank you, Madam Chair. The original that you were referring to uh, was not the original. The original, I believe, was done in 99. There might have been one prior to that. But when I did my research, I went, found one in 99. Yeah, that's possible, yeah. yeah. And it said 100% of the revenue from this fee should go into the cable TV fund. 100%. Now, I remember a certain citizen went quietly to the Board of Selectmen prior to the cameras being turned on and pointing out some years ago that they were only spending something like 30% of that money, and they were taking the rest of it and putting it into general revenue. And, I, and that citizen pointed out that that represents a 70% of that money is actually being used as a sales tax. I'm not done, Sonny. 70% of that is actually a sales tax. A sales tax. You get that, Max? We're talking sales tax. Who is that citizen? Could we name that person? No, no, he wants to remain anonymous. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling I know who it is. <laughs> so what did the Board of Selectmen say to that citizen? Oh, wait, good point. We're going to have to correct that. And so they created a warrant article to say we're only going to put 25% in there, thus making it a 75% of it being a sales tax. Now, what did we have for a discussion at the most recent Board of Selectmen on this matter? No. Uh, we have the selectman saying, or I think it was selectman vinyl saying, well, this doesn't seem all that right, but since I'm not a subscriber, I'm not going to complain or something to that effect. Oh, but, uh, but the most significant comment actually came from selectman Waddle, who said, this is wrong. He's, he was right, too. This is wrong, but he's going to support it because right now it's 75% wrong, and after this passes, it's, it's going to be only 60% right. wrong. So that's progress. <laughs> hold it. Well, I am saying this. There is no reason why we can't just make this 100% right and go back to the way it was, certainly in 99, 100% of the money going into the fund and none of it being used as a sales tax. What is a sales tax is you tax someone for a retail sale and you take the money and you put it in the general fund. Oh, That's exactly what this does. This is nothing more than a sales tax. I object to it most vehemently. And unfortunately, I'm going to find myself in the same position as Selectman Waddle and saying, God, I'm going to have to vote for something that's less wrong when we should be voting for something that's right. I agree you don't you. Calm Tim. Down, you're going to have a hard time. I'm sorry, but I oppose sales tax. <laughs> I moved to New Hampshire from part to stay away right. from those damn sales tax. Let's, like, let's move to the other side of the floor. Sonny, I'm not doing CPA. And then Jerry. Oh, no. All right. Come on, guys. It's a good Yes, don't, don't object to our income taxes. Get back this to money be used, Not on the warrant. Could <laughs> this money be used to take the town Wi-Fi? It can be used for uh, uh, cable TV channels. That's it. Okay, Jerry. The only point that I wanted to make is uh, I, I agree with Tim. What Tim says, however, Mr. Bean, Selectman Bean, did mention that they would address this in the next semester, as he called it. So next semester, uh, Phil, what would you term it? Next semester? Yeah, you said, <laughs> which means that in, 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 in 2016, the, they would pick the subject up and more or less try to get 
in effect that well then if you're going to pick it up and you're going to put a warrant article now why not address it monday yeah. night yeah. Right. It could be do we want monday do you night. want to bring i mean it, it makes you know although you went a little long on it tim it, it does make sense if that was the original intention we're not talking about a whole lot of money here guys mm -hmm. all right it's not going to make or break the world but in the world of cable it might make a huge difference to the schools and to the systems right. that we use if you're going to take it up in 2016, how about we table this until next Wednesday night and give you the opportunity to go back, perhaps, and ask the board to revisit it for the 100%. It's your, it's your board, Madam Chair, and we'll, we'll take back whatever message and we table it or whatever you want to do. Okay, what's well, the, I think it's, a matter, only, I think it's only, a matter of principle. Okay. <laughs> you know, if we had more people on the board of selectmen. Tim, just a minute. <laughs> okay, no. It's not a matter of just tabling it. My, Tabling it right now and putting it off until next Wednesday has no resolve if you're not going to bring it up for a vote Monday night to change that. If that's not going to be done and well, if you uh, just <laughs> for a minute, all right? Seriously, this is a Warren article. It needs a vote one way or the other. And all I'm suggesting is you've brought up some valid points. And if our selectman representative wants to go back to the Board of Selectmen Monday night and share our concerns with this, that it perhaps be moved to 100% instead of, you know, moving to 40% and then taking it back up in 2016, only to have another Warren article next year. But I guess I'm asking for a commitment to, of you to do that. Otherwise, we might as well just as well take a vote tonight. Jerry. Madam Chair, the, I, I think what I heard was, and, and I and I agree with it uh, when they when they met was, the right thing to do is take only what you need. You don't need a hundred percent of this fee that's going in to okay. run the thirteen and the twenty two. You need only a percentage of that revenue. So you'd have to sidebar the current Comcast contract or something so that they stop taking the four percent off or whatever it is. They don't need all of that money. They only need about half of it. So then just charge the customers half. Okay, and then the customers would only get charged half. You, you, Fine. Okay, so there would They're be a they would see a reduction in their Comcast bill. So what's okay. the pleasure of this committee, to vote on this tonight? Madam Chair, I think we can be confident that we've got at least one member of the Board of Selectmen. If we had more that were running in, in a present campaign for a state office, <laughs> that they would, in fact, on the principle of the matter, not, of course, subjecting themselves to being attacked in a campaign, they would vote to get right. rid of the sales tax. Scott. I understood it took like six years to get this thing with, through Comcast. And, uh, but it was, it was a long process. It, 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 Very the long process. The negotiation began in 2005 and it was finished in 2012. I don't think messing with the fees is the answer. Okay. So when should you start negotiating this round here, uh, Fred? All right. I don't see any hands up. I'm going to put this to a vote. We'll vote on it tonight. Based on our vote, they can do whatever they want to do with it next Monday night. All right. Yeah. All those in favor of this Warren article number 31 as written to go to 40 percent? I'm going to have to go with it. You're going to have to okay. go with it. Okay. Opposed? Sandy? Abstentions? <laughs> all that oh, noise yeah. and you, all that noise and you simply abstain it? I cannot soil myself <laughs> voting for something that I know to be 60% long. How <laughs> well, can I oppose it to make it better than 75% long as it is now? Okay. I'm soiling yourself. All right, I've run out of foreign articles for tonight. This is Stephen's favorite. Sorry, right, right, but there's a principle here. Second. Motion to adjourn. Steve, Steve, hold on. Second. Oh, hold on. Sorry. The calendar. Are we not meeting on Friday now? Oh, we are. Oh, we are. Are we meeting next Wednesday? Yes. We are. Are we meeting at 6 o'clock on Thursday? 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock? 6 or 7. No, seven. I'm changing it to 7. All back to 7. So every meeting's at 7 now. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, every every meeting. Thursday, we probably really need seven. to meet on Friday. I just. Yes, we do. How about if we decide that on Thursday night? Yeah. <laughs> That's how, about a good if, idea. how about if I hold my back, my passion on I have Thursday, a work schedule that I can't just willy nilly <laughs> pick up and drop. We so that's why I'm kind of trying to make arrangements ahead of time. That's why I'm asking. Okay, yes, as the schedule stands right now, because it was hard on, on cable, they accommodated us with Friday, but it was hard to add the extra hour. 
So if you guys could come in a little bit more efficiently with your deliberation on Thursday, it would be wonderful. Um, but Thursday and Friday this week, 7 o'clock, <coughs> and I've added a date next Wednesday, also at 7 in here in this room. We have coverage for all these nights. And next Thursday is the, um, the public hearing. It has been um, put out there. It is going to be in the paper. That, yeah, tomorrow. I think Wednesday. With proper notice. Wednesday of next week. Necessary if for no other reason. The board of selectmen will be voting on uh, the bargaining the agreements. The CBAs. We have no choice. Uh, on Monday. So we can be sure we'll be meeting on Wednesday for that alone. Yes, but you're still not going to talk me out of Friday. But I'm not sure that, you know, given that we're meeting on Wednesday, I'm not sure that Friday is necessary. Of course, it depends on how efficient we are on Thursday. Yes. Yeah. So we have a motion so let's not write Friday in stone. Friday is not up for so discussion no to make it perfectly clear. <laughs> well, that'll be subject to Mr. other jo people. So clear. Despite Mr. Jones's objections, <laughs> there will be no cancellation of Friday. I didn't object. I simply offered to Okay, thank you. I yield the floor to Mr. Oh, LeBranch. You want to call for a vote, madame? Who seconded the second? Just proclaim Ryan. we're adjourned. Okay. All those in favor? Of adjournment? Amen. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. 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 Thank